We welcome you to Aggie Memorial Stadium in Las Cruces. Adam Young alongside the former Aggie, Danny Nee. So glad you could join us here tonight. Aggies seeking their first win of the season. Bulldogs looking for their second straight win, trying to move to two and two. Well, we had some rough weather two weeks ago for the home opener. The weather is absolutely perfect here today. 85 degrees, light wind, sunny, perfect football weather here at Aggie Memorial Stadium in Las Cruces. Danny Nee, your keys to the game. Well, Adam, here's how I see it going. You know, last week we talked about the confidence that uh, that the Aggies had at UNM. We didn't get the win, but there was so much confidence there. I think they have to maintain that confidence. That confidence leads to big plays. Big plays leads to reinforcement, and the reinforcement leads back to contagious attitudes on the field and leads back to more confidence. I see the D-line. We need more help from the D-line, more pressure up front there. You know, last week we had zero QB hurries against UNM, and I think in order to help the linebackers and DBs make more plays, we need more pressure on the line up there. I'm a believer on games are won and lost up front. Those big bubbas have to step up and play big tonight and turnovers. Great job last week. We went from four against San Diego State to one at UNM, and that's what I see. Turnovers, keep them low. There's the Aggie head coach, Doug Martin. 0-4 so far this year. The Aggies have lost six straight, dating back to last year. Doug Martin said earlier this week, this Fresno State team is better than Washington State, he believes. He feels like this is the best team the Aggies have played outside of Alabama so far in 2019. Doug looking for his 21st win as the Aggie head coach. Head coach for the Bulldogs is Jeff Tedford, former quarterback at Fresno State, was also an offensive coordinator at Fresno State back in the day. He actually began his coaching career at Fresno State as the volunteer assistant back in 1987. He's also had some impressive stops in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as their OC, and he was formerly the head coach at California Berkeley from 2002 through 2012. The Aggies will receive the opening kick. And this offense, Danny, was really, really good last week. 52 points. And I know any head coach, including that one right there, Doug Martin, will tell you, if you score 52 on the road, you should win the football game. Yeah, you know, and I really believe that is a confidence builder. So we'll see if they can't take this confidence and keep it rolling tonight. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs coming off their first one of the season, 34-20 against FCS Sacramento State one week ago. This is a Bulldogs program that is coming off 22 wins in the previous two years. That's after only one win in 2016. Asa Fuller will kick off for Fresno State in the white. Aggies trying to win just their second ever game against the Bulldogs and we are underway as the ball is kicked over the head of Jason Huntley, who did have a couple of returns last week. But I highly doubt, Danny, he's going to see many returns the rest of the way this well, year. You know, you know, and I think Coach even said the same thing. It's like, I, whatever you do, if he was coaching the team, is do not kick it to Huntley. And that's why. Well, last week, 71 yards, almost broke it. So first down and 10 for Josh Atkins in the Aggie offense. Atkins making his 13th career start. The Aggies with a season-high 489 yards of total offense last week. Running back is Huntley. Front side pressure. Dump off to Huntley. And he is smothered for a loss of one yard of the play. This Fresno State defense is good, and they force a lot of turnovers. They have forced eight in three games. And they come out with a little screen here, Adam, a little confidence builder. So they popped it out quickly there, and there's one block. So we have Isaiah. Isaiah stepping up at that left guard position. That was his block, and we needed him to grab that guy. Second down and long for the Aggies. Atkins throwing near side to Huntley. Huntley across the 30, making one man miss. And it's going to bring up third down for the Aggies. This is shown early, Danny, that the Aggies are trying to give Huntley as many touches as possible. You know, getting Huntley the ball in open space is what it's all about. We've talked about it all year long. In this case, this is what's happening here. We have one block, one miss, and he's off to the races. Third down, four yards to go. The Aggies com converting on 40% of their third downs this year. Incomplete, out of the reach of Isaiah Lotti. In coverage was linebacker Michael Walker. 
You know, I, I think, I'm not sure that Lottie was the intended receiver there, and he just waited in there and just tr couldn't get the ball over top of Lottie, but Lottie stuck his hand up there. But great blocking up front, lots of time in there. It was three, four count in there for Josh to get rid of the ball, which is what we're going to need tonight. Punter Peyton Theisler was great last week, a season best 53 yards per punt. He will punt away to Ronnie Rivers, the running back, who's also the punt returner for Fresno State. Rivers won't touch it, and this is going to turn out to be a really good punt inside the 20 for Theisler. His sixth punt this year inside the 20. And that's your house to turn the flip the fields in a hurry, right, when you can get one to run like that. It didn't hit it all, but he got a big bounce out of it, and that helps. 51-yard punt for Theisler. Our first look now at the Fresno State offense led by Jorge Reyna, redshirt senior. First-year starter, though, Danny, at the FBS level, so he's old, but he's still relatively inexperienced at this level. Bulldogs really thin at running back this year. They only really use two, Ronnie Rivers and Josh Hokett. Motion man is Darion Grimm. Reyna, the give to Grimm. They only use two running backs, Rivers and Hokett. In fact, Hokett was actually a linebacker during the preseason, but had to move to running back because of their lack of depth at that position. And you know, last week he had a big, big week, right? He had two, two TDs running and uh, one receiving, so, so he can do it. Even though they just moved him there, he is quite capable. Initially was a pistol look, now Rivers to the left of Arena from Downey, California, in the LA area. Whistles a pass near side that is caught by Jamal Glaspy. And Gillespie has enough for a first down to move the change for Fresno State. And he looked right, and there was nothing there. In fact, we jumped that route, and this one, he just got it out there quick enough. But I, I like uh, Jared to come screaming up on that a little bit faster, but he's right there with him the whole way. Just one more hand in there, pull that thing out. Just the second catch this year for Gillespie, who's a freshman from L.A. Three receivers, top side of your screen. Screen pass, big hits by Jason Simmons Jr. Catch was made by Amori Edwards, redshirt freshman from California. Got a little tempo here, but boy, did uh, Simmons put a lick on him there. As you can see him come screaming up right there in the middle of your screen, big pop. Fake the handoff to Rivers, pass complete to Zane Pope. His 16th catch this year, tops on Fresno State. Picks up eight yards on the play. First down for the Bulldogs. They have a little tempo here, but the, but the thing that uh, Jorge's really doing is getting that ball out quickly. We talked in the open about trying to get more defensive linemen, at least the keys of the game, get more pressure on them. But, you know, it's tough when a quarterback gets the ball out in a two count that you really can't get there, but there's somehow you have to slow it down just a bit. This is a rather inexperienced offense for the Bulldogs. They only brought back three offensive starters from last year. Play action, Reyna's in trouble. He's being chased by Cedric Wilcox. He gets it away as he throws it into the Yankee bench area. Hey, there's the pressure. There's what yep. we'd like to see. We haven't seen it in a while. So great pressure there. And it makes him spill out of the pocket and trying to look downfield. And we had good pressure and we had good coverage and there's nothing he could do with it. That's what we need from that defense. The Aggie defense has not forced a fumble this year. They only have one sack and they have two picks, so only two forced turnovers. Could really bode well if they could find a way to get some pressure on Arena. This is Rivers, breaks the tackle before he's taken down by Xander Yarborough and Javon Ferguson from behind. He gets three yards. Man, did you see? They were just inches away from having a four-yard loss in that thing, and we just got to figure out how to get off those blocks quickly and get to them. But it was good way to come back on the defense. I see gang tackling. Look how many Aggies are around there waiting. And there we are, slows them up. Javon Ferguson slows them, and the rest of the guys finish them. That's a great gang tackling job, right, right, the Aggies. Yeah, that would have been a loss of three or four for Rivers. He finds a way to get back to the line of scrimmage. Fresno State has already matched their loss total from last year. Last year, the Bulldogs were 12-2. Beat Arizona State last year in the Vegas Bowl. 
They have a 38% conversion rate on third down. There's some confusion here. I'm not sure if it's about the spot or what. And they're, and they're looking at the different balls that, that are there, and I, I don't know if they were got the balls on the wrong sidelines. And So there is a Fresno one and then a New Mexico State one, and so somehow they're trying to flip it around here to get the right ball in there so he knows. There we go. There we go. Opponents are 50% on third down versus the Aggies this year. And M State trying to make a big early stop near midfield. Caught. First down, Carrick Wheatfall, Jr. from Cypress, Texas. 10 yard pickup. Tough one there, you're running someone straight up the field on a post or somewhere to clear the zone, and then you're gonna bring someone underneath and a little square in there, and uh, Jared Phipps is on him, but he's just gotta tighten up just a little bit more. Three wide receivers set, one tight end, that is Jared Rice. Running back here is Ronnie Rivers, who falls forward near the 35-yard line after picking up a half dozen. Well, you know, I don't even know how he, how did he get that many yards, Adam? It looks like we had him pinned up at the line of scrimmage and that whole big scrum just kind of moved forward and it turned into be a pretty decent first play there. Rivers out of Brentwood, California. He's a junior. Came in with 270 all-purpose yards in just three games. Fresno State has already had a bye week, so they played one less than most. So Rivers, after faking the jet sweep to Cropper, once again, it's only Rivers and Hokan. Those are the two running backs that are used for Fresno State. So Rivers will get a lot of touches in the backfield here tonight. Yeah, you know, we're in there. We're all over them. It would just be nice to get that little uh, initial hit a little deeper in there. I, I saw that uh, Devin Richards made the initial contact in the backfield but just couldn't hold on as he spun through and made some positive yards. Deep back is Josh Hokett for the first time tonight. He's an All-American wrestler at Fresno State as well. Jet sweep to Cropper. This freshman is dangerous. Spins out of a tackle inside the 10-yard line. First down and goal for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's a tough one there. You got to keep them inside. You not, can't let them get the edge on there. And so in this case, came through a jet sweep, got the edge, and turned it upfield. And there was lots of room to run. 25-yard explosion for Cropper. Jump pass to Wheatfall. Good coverage in the backside by Jared Phipps, senior from Arlington. Yeah, that's great coverage right there. Jared turned around at the right time, knocked that ball away. You know, that's three times they, they've went to uh, Jared's side on this drive, and that is just good coverage. He's all over him. Yes, two wide receivers right now for the Bulldogs, Pope and Grimm. Pistol back is Hokett, who had three total touchdowns last week in their win against Sacramento State. Stretch handoff to Hokett. Hokett breaks a tackle, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Josh Hokett. His third rushing touchdown this year. The All-American wrestler from Clovis, California. That's just smash, smash mouth football right there, right off the tackle. And you just come down there, you run past all the linebackers. There's no help in the secondaries because they ran them off. And uh, that's just a long sustained drive right there. So we gotta figure out a dial away to shut those down. Point after from Cesar Silva. Transfer from the College of San Mateo. Out of the hold of Arena. Starting quarterback also the holder here in this scenario. And it's 7-0 Fresno State. Josh Hokett wrestled at 197 last year for the Fresno State wrestling team. He's playing at 227 right now for the football squad. And he runs it in from eight yards away. 7-0 Bulldogs. Impressive scoring drive for Fresno State. They go 12 plays, 82 yards, 4 minutes and 36 seconds. 8-yard touchdown run for Josh Hokett. And it's 7-0 Bulldogs after their first offensive possession. 
Here's your, the impact players, Danny, for the Aggies in offense. Yeah, we got to get these guys going. Jason Huntley and Tony Nicholson had two career nights last week against UNM. Jason had two touchdowns, uh, one receiving, one rushing. Tony Nichols had two touchdowns receiving. They're going up against two very good linebackers, Mikel Walker and Justin Rice, the one and two number tacklers for Fresno State. See if we can't get around those guys and put some points on the board here. Fuller will kick off again for Fresno State. Beautiful football weather today. I mean perfect, 85 degrees, no rain, light wind, 10 miles per hour. Fuller with the win behind him. No shot for Jason Huntley. Huntley was great last week. He's still sitting on five career kick return touchdowns. He had two returns last week for 98 yards. It was good to see him get the ball again in the return game, Danny. Yeah, I think it's one of those things, too. It's mum, mum, muscle memory where if you haven't done it in a while, you kind of forget about it. So now that he's got a couple under his belt, let's see if he can't catch one along the way here and Take it to the house. Need two more out of him. Second offensive series for Josh Atkins and the Aggies. Atkins last week, three touchdowns through the air, three on the ground, six total. He's under pressure. Still gets it away. Guess who? Tony Nicholson, his 24th catch this year, tops on the Aggies. Great route, and he just hung in there. But, you know, I think more importantly, Josh had pressure, lots of pressure. He gets it from the outside. He steps up in the pocket, knows he's going to take a pop. He drops his elbow down, kind of gets his sidearm in there. Great catch. 21-yard pickup on first down. Underneath, incomplete. It was thrown behind the intended receiver, Navion Mitchell, who came into the year as a running back. Now he's turned into pretty much exclusively a slot receiver. I like that. He's kind of quick, kind of a scat back. In that case, Mosby was on him. I'm not sure that he could have done anything, even if he caught that ball. Doug Martin was raving about the linebackers for Fresno State earlier this week at his press conference. Fling it out to Christian Gibson, who dives to midfield right at the 50-yard line. Pick up a four yards for Gibson out of the backfield. You know, that's what I like about Gibson. When he gets the ball, he's north and south. He squares his shoulders. There was two defenders right there, and he shimmied right between both of them. He's a hard runner right up the gut. Great positive yards in there by Christian Gibson. Gibson motions to the right of Atkins. Across the middle to O.J. Clark, and that's going to be well short. Uh, the first down, Danny, not a whole lot there. Uh, not a lot there. I kind of dumped it off quickly trying to get some, uh, get, get some open space going again. But, you know, there was just coverage on everything. There's All the receivers were covered. And if you watch on the top of the screen, they're covered. Across the middle, they're covered. So there's not much you can do with that. And puts us in a punting si situation already. And now this is really tough on your defense, too, because this is a short rest for your defense after a long drive. Uh, four and a half minutes plus for Fresno State just moments ago. Rivers is back. Theisler will boot it away. Fair catch called for and taken by Rivers inside the 15-yard line. 35-yard punt for Theisler. No return for Rivers. 7-0 Fresno State. Two empty possessions so far for the Aggies on offense. There's a look at Oliver Sukup in the Aggie defense, trailing 7-0. Fresno State ball deep in their own territory again. They only have two running backs, Danny, that they're going to use, but they're both very good. Yeah, we've already seen Josh already put one on the board tonight, scored two last week. Ronnie Rivers is the other one. He's doing quite well. Those are the guys we've got to figure out a way to corral on a defensive side for the Aggies. Perkins had another interception last week to match the one he already had. And Javon Ferguson had 13 tackles against UNM. Leads the team in tackles. Let's see if those guys can't combo on some things and maybe create a turnover. That would be great for the Ags. Four pass breakups for Ferguson this year. Two in each of the previous two weeks. Roy Lopez still out for the fourth straight game. Doug Martin did say this week that the Aggies will redshirt Lopez, but if he's healthy, he can still play in the final three games and use a redshirt this year. 14-yard line for Fresno State. Play action for Reyna. 
The redshirt junior has loads of time. He uncorks downfield, and it's incomplete. Almost intercepted by Rodney McGraw. Two hankies near the 40. Yeah, I think they're going to get a little pass interference in there, but the amount of time that he had is, is really something that we need to look at from an Aggie perspective because we talked about trying to get more pressure on there, and he has a little play action. Everyone drops back in zone, but look how much time he has there. We can't get off the block, can't get off the block, throws it deep, and you can see one of the flags in the middle there just being tossed, and one more got tossed. Aggies have had some issues in the secondary this year. They've been relatively healthy back there, but Doug Martin's still looking for improved performance in the Aggies secondary, which is filled up with veterans. Yeah. Holding by number 29 of the defense. Pass interference by number one of the offense. The penalty's offset, replay first down. Wow, so Phipps gets called for holding. Wheatfall gets called for offensive pass interference. Those two penalties will offset. Our referee tonight, by the way, is Cooper Castleberry. Hey, that's kind of a break right there yeah. for us, I would say, Adam, don't you? Sure is. Yeah, so, the, you know, thinking about this, this uh, the rush that we had on the quarterback that we didn't have anything, this, I wonder if, if Coach Spaziani is going to have to start dialing up more blitzing. The thing about blitzing, it leads you away from zone and more man. Rivers in the backfield with Reyna. Cropper was in motion. Reyna pulls it, fires to Cropper. Good blocking on the outside for Fresno State. Helping Cropper get the first down. That was big tight end Jared Rice who was leading the blocking for Fresno State that allows them to pick up 14. Man, you, it's a quick talk to the outside here and look at Jared Phipps. He comes and takes the inside pursuit angle so you saw him step in and when he does that, he gives him the corner. That's not what we need out there. We need to turn back to where the pursuit is happening. Aggies rush five. Running back is Rivers. And he's tackled from behind by Devin Richardson, redshirt freshman from Klein High School in Klein, Texas. You know, I know the uh, offensive line is uh, very talented for Fresno State, but from the defensive line perspective from the Aggies, and I know we t I talked to Coach Mumford about this too, so we got to figure out a way, and he, he wholeheartedly concerned about trying to get off the block and get to the running back or quarterbacks. A tight bunch formation here for the Bulldogs. Wide receiver Pope is tied to the formation. In motion was Grimm, trying to bounce to the outside. Rivers, nothing there. Good play by Matt Young at the money position and Shimon Lomax out of the Yagi secondary. Hey, I'd like to see Matt Young in there. Haven't seen him in a while. Wearing that same number for Mr. Fred Young that's in the ring of honor up there. Played with Mr. Fred Young, his dad. Great job by Matt and Shimon Lomax comes screaming up there. Great play. More of that. Need more of that. Fresno State one for one on a third down. It's ring of honor weekend. And Matt Young makes a big play on second down. Let's see if the Yankees can make a play on third down and get off the field. There's the pressure. Cedric Wilcott's his first sack this year. Hey, oh, what about that? Adam, we talked about Cedric before we went on the air when we were comparing notes and said, man, Cedric was just everywhere last year. We need him involved. He's so long and lanky and his arms get out there and you know he can knock down pitches. He can do so much. And this time he shimmied his block and made a great sack. Great job. Came into the game with 16 and a half career sacks. His first sack this year, just the second sack by an Aggie this year. Punter for the Bulldogs is a good one. It is senior Blake Cusick playing in his 44th career game. Punting away to O.J. Clark. O.J. calls for a fair catch at the 25-yard line. No return, punt of 50 for Cusick. Big play for that man, Cedric Wilcox, the second. Aggies with the ball when we come back. Great student section tonight. Second home game of the season for the Aggies. Back at Aggie Memorial Stadium for the first of two straight. The Aggies will host Liberty next weekend for homecoming. Josh Atkins and the Aggie offense back to work. Atkins last year started eight games. The final eight, this year he went into the season as the guy. 
We talked to Josh in the preseason about being the guy going into his sophomore year. And this year, now being the starter, I understand there's a lot more responsibility, a lot more leadership aspect to that. But that's something um, that I love and, and everything that I wanted. You know, when I was third string, I wanted to be that guy. So, so now that I am, I don't take it for granted. And every day I, I, I act like I, was, I am the third string. And I'm hungry and I try to earn it every single day. Seven nothing Fresno State. Atkins at the helm, 13th career start. He's a captain as a sophomore. Kayla Mills is in for the first time this year. Missed the first four games. He's in the bottom side of the screen. Passes incomplete. The Aggies were looking for Navion Mitchell. It was a forward pass. Linebacker Michael Walker was scooping it up just in case. You know, those are those are great plays when you can point, you can block on the point of attack, but if you don't get that block, it always looks like, oh, why did they run that? Great play if you can just get that one block. We didn't get it last play. Mills off the field now. Atkins almost intercepted. Defensive end, Isaiah Johnson got his left paw on it. Atkins is under heavy pressure again, Danny. Yeah, you know, lots of pressure there. Maybe we get Josh rolling out of the pocket a little bit. That he just tried to get a little screen going underneath there, but there was just so fast in his face that he couldn't even get rid of the ball. Almost turned into a disaster with a pick, so I'm glad they didn't catch that. But, yeah, it makes it tough. The rhythm's not there today. That was Kevin Atkins leading the charge. The most sacks this year, three for Fresno State. Another near interception. That play was Aaron Mosby who got his hands on it. And that's tight coverage in there. Somehow we've got to figure out a way to call a play to start loosening up that coverage. And one of the ways you can do that is starting to take some shots downfield and have a threat where you can drive them downfield and stop and have a little comeback to it. But until you do that, they, they just are on you, and there's just nothing Josh could do with the ball. Receivers can't get open. And three and out. Yeah, so this is now three offensive possessions and three punts for Theisler. Fortunately for the Aggie offense, the defense is coming off a good defensive stand. Another boomer for Deisler. Good grief. As Rivers backing up inside the 20. Could have been a block in the back, no call. Now there is a flag coming in. I don't know if it's he, for the block in the back or if it was late. I don't know, but he was certainly looking at that call right there, and the crowd kind of moaned just a bit because it looked like he blocked him in the back, but uh, we'll see what the call is there. That was one boom of a punt. Waylon Free would be the guilty party if it is indeed a block in the back. You'd be the judge. It, close. It was close. Tackle was made by Rodney McGraw on special teams. Once again, our referee today is Cooper Castleberry. During the return, an illegal block in the back by number four of the receiving team. It's a 10-yard penalty, and it's first down. There you go. So a 53-yard punt for Theisler at 10 yards aren't to it. Poor field position again for Fresno State. You know, putting our defense back out there again, you mentioned that earlier, is like three and out, three and out, three and out. So there's now three three and outs by the Ags on offense, and it makes your defense get back on the field and just keep it up. So the, so the defense has to step up. They did a great job last series. Let's see if they can't match it again. You just saw Bulldogs head coach Jeff Tedford. He's coached some really good quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers, Kyle Buller, Joey Harrington, Achilles Smith, and now Jorge Arena out of Downey, California, fifth-year senior, first-year FBS starter. Transfer from West L.A. College. Josh Hokitz goes nowhere. He, you know, it's kind of funny because the, the, a few series before, we had no pressure and we're wondering why can't they get through, why can't they get through. In this case, we had three guys that are standing in the backfield ready for him, and then someone comes screaming in at the very end there, Simmons, he's just like a torpedo coming in there. First hit was made by Jemias Williams, the transfer from Coffeyville Community College. Hokett stays in in the backfield with Jorge Reyna. It was a loss of one on the previous play. Here's a second down run for Hokett. He gets to the second level, but not much. And it's going to be third down and long for the Bulldogs. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what quick adjustments the coaches uh, were making on the sidelines, but they, they did something. They tweaked something, and it really seems to have impacted that defensive line up front. Maybe get more linebackers into the game up front and do a little game and confusion. See if they can't dial up some more pressure. Bulldogs need the 21. Reyna, flag thrown, pass complete to the tight end, Jared Rice. Wow. Nowhere near the first down yardage. Look, that's five Aggie defenders on there. I'm, I'm a big fan of gang tackling, and, and we see more guys getting in. I see Chance Cook getting in there, but look at the pressure Holding up front. Holding by it number 65 of the offense. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. So it was holding our holding. Fresno State. That shows you how good this defensive line is playing right now. And and I see the coach is making up some ch making some changes here, and he's getting Chance Cook in there. He's getting some other guys in there, and we have Aggies that are just flying around. Five guys to the ball, gang tackling. That's what it's all about. That's what they need. So that's a nice three and out by the Yags. Well, let's go back to two weeks ago. The defense played well. The offense struggled. Oh. Last week, the offense played great. The defense struggled. Right now, we're in that flip again where the defense is starting to play well. In the offense, three series, three series without any points. Returnable for Clark, but he's hit immediately by Michael Walker, the linebacker on defense, after a punt of 45 yards. So now we'll see if the offense can find a groove here, Danny. Yeah, you know, I'm glad he caught that ball right there. So you take that, even if you don't get any extra yardage. By the way, that is the toughest position is to field punts. But you make the catch, and you're at starting at good field position, and that's based on a good defensive series. So you're During almost... Six, holding by number six of the return team. The penalty is enforced from the dead ball spot, and it's first down. Got a hold on the eggs there on that return. Yeah, holding was called on Derek Watson on the return. Under two left here in the first quarter. 7-0 Fresno State. Josh Atkins, 5 of 10 for 33 yards. Jason Huntley on the ground. That is the first rushing attempt by the Aggies in the game. You know, we, we talked about uh, impact players, Tony Nicholson, and what a great job that Tony is doing receiving the ball. In this case, you get Huntley the ball, you get him the corner, but what really makes that play is Tony Nicholson on his block. He's holding his block for a three or four count, and that really what is what broke that last play. Huntley had 114 yards on the ground last week, a new career high. And he gets a first down on this run. He got seven on his first run, he gets six on his second run. So you get a good outside play and they have to start respecting that. They get a little wider and Huntley gets enough space in there just to go get five or six yards. Two running backs in for the Aggies. Now they motion out Gibson. Huntley with a big hole. Jason Huntley down the sideline, spins. What a move by Huntley. Did, did you see that block, Adam, on the receiver coming back around? So first of all, you get a run pass option. So now you get an aggressive defense. And what you do is you come back and say, fine, then I'm going to do a little run pass option. He reads it. He hands the ball off Jason very, very quick at the outside. Big block right there on the outside by a receiver coming back in. They, that really gives us another five, six, seven, eight yards on that. 23 yard explosion for Huntley on first down. And the Aggies are forced to call a timeout. The coaches on the sideline were furious with something and the Aggies are forced to use a timeout right here. But they are driving with 35 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Man, they, this, it's, it's kind of funny how fast the momentum can change from one series to another. Because early in the game, you couldn't even get a running play, couldn't get a passing play off. Now, all of a sudden, you come back out here, and Coach found something. It could be some of this run pass option that's making Fresno State decide if they're going to be in a run or they're going to be in, in a pass defense. Here's the one we're just talking about here where Jason Huntley breaks it to the outside. Let's see who comes back in. Big block right there that breaks him. Spin move. That's the guy that you want to have the ball in the open for sure. 
Danny, that reminded me of a Larry Rose, the third run right? a couple years ago when he just eludes tacklers, changes directions, changes field direction as well. I mean, he can jump. He would jump sideways, yep. and he would just explode. You're right. The Aggies motion out Huntley. They whistle a pass to O.J. Clark, and Clark is taken down for a short gain of one yard. Well, we were told earlier, Danny, that Chris Coleman, a wide receiver for Fresno State, could play defensively. That's Coleman making the tackle. Oh, I'm glad you caught that because I was just telling everyone when, when after the uh, Sports Information guy said, hey, look, he can go both ways. This will be great. This is the first game I've called where someone has played both ways. Coleman came up quick on that. The Aggies reverse it to Nicholson, but he goes nowhere. Yeah, so Chris Coleman is in in the secondary for Fresno State because of injuries to Deshaun Ruffin and Chris Gaston at cornerback. That's the end Fresno of the first State. quarter. So we'll keep a close eye on that as we continue. Through one quarter of play, the Aggies have the football on third down when you come back. For 36 yards during this possession for Jason Huntley, the star senior All-American running back from Arlington, Texas. Adam Young and Danny Nee with you. Great to have you with us. Right now, the Aggies are on a third down and 10. They're on the back end of Dylan Brown's field goal depth, if you will. Third down and 10. This is a big play so far in this game, Danny. Still early. It is still early, but but you don't want to get the score. You don't want to get behind the sticks too bad on the score because it makes it get, makes you get out of your game plan a little bit. And we got one that's really working, so this is an important third down. Four receivers here in the formation. Christian Gibson is the running back. Best possession so far for the Aggie offense tonight. Gibson was tripped up as the Aggies ran on a third and ten. It would have been close whether he could have got that first down. I know he saw some, some green to the left, and he was trying to make that move to the left. I think Coach was anticipating they're coming with the, with the rush, and so he was going to try to sneak someone underneath and see if they can't get a little closer for Dylan Brown. This will be a 50-yarder for Brown. His career long with the Aggies is 49. He did kick a 50-yarder at the JUCO level at Phoenix College a few years ago. Out of the hold of Luke Wilson. And he pushed it left. Had the distance in that one, Danny. Just pushed it left. And it was kind of hard to get the perspective here. He certainly had plenty of leg behind that thing, and I don't know how close he was to it, but um, that's too bad. That's a, a missed, missed opportunity right there. So Brown now three for six on field goal tries this year. Missed a big one last week, a kick that was tipped late in the game against UNM. Snap was good, hold was good, but just wide left for Dylan Brown. So now it's Fresno State football at the 33. And now all of a sudden the Aggies are asking a lot out of their defense. Reyna, screen pass, nothing doing. Rashi Hodge Jr. on the doorstep. Taking it down, and Maury Edwards. Man, Rashi Hart just bull rushed the man in front of him. He almost tackled two guys. So he just bull rushed and pushed him all the way back into the receiver. And you can see right here, quick toss to the outside. There he is. He drove his man five yards back, and he, they're both there. And he's just grabbing jerseys and bringing everyone down. Hodge, third on the team at tackles this year, came in with 28. That's his second tackle for loss. Reyna throwing on oh. the run. Jason Simmons Jr. was playing the man, not the ball. If he was playing the ball, he might have had a pick. I think he could have taken that to the house. So being, being a former free safety, I understand exactly what he's talking about. He was saying, hey, look, this is my territory. Anyone comes to my territory is going to get popped a little bit. He's thinking, I'm going to pop this guy. But you're right, Adam. If his eyes were up on the quarterback, he might have seen that and took it to the house. Nonetheless, it's a good defensive series, and I know what he's thinking. It's like, this is my territory. Don't come in my territory. That pass was intended for senior Darion Grimm. Third and 11 for Fresno State. They're just one for three on third down. 
The Aggies rushing five. Reina's pass incompletes. We'll sit it right by Darion Grimm again. That's three straight really good possessions for the Yankee defense. That's great coverage right there. That's Shamad Lomax on that. Now, now he can play. We know that. And so last week, not don't know what happened, but last week's last week. Now you come to play. He has come to play, and we needed that right there. Blake Cusick will punt. O.J. Clark and Tony Nicholson both back deep. Cusick has a long of 60 this year. He's averaging 45 yards per punt. This one's a low punt, not a great one. Takes a backwards bounce, and the Yankees will have good field position as Cam Sutton touches the football. Check that. Aaron Mosby touched the football there for Fresno State. Aggie football when you come back looking for their first win of the season. Fresno State in town this weekend, the reigning Mountain West champs, three-time champs in the Mountain West, preseason pick to win the Mountain West West Division this year. They won 12 football games last year, won the Vegas Bowl, Hawaii Bowl champs two years ago. And this is all after a one-win season in 2016. They are the first team in FBS history to have back-to-back double-digit win seasons after a double-digit loss season Head coach Jeff Tedford has really flipped this for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's quite the turnaround. The drive so far for the offense for the Aggies, three punts and one missed field goal of 50 yards by Dylan Brown, which would have been his longest as an Aggie. The Aggies have the football at the 36. Another two back set before Gibson goes in motion. Gibson will block for Huntley. Huntley has been elusive here tonight. Coming off a very good game against UNM last weekend. Had two touchdowns, one rushing and one receiving last week. And you know, I know what coach is thinking here. It's like he can get out here on the edge, get him in open space, and it's Jason Huntley. You make one man miss, and you could take it to the house. It's just not happening. They're attacking him, and they have a lot of guys to the ball. Atkins will pull it and run himself as he slides to get back some of the yardage that was lost in the previous play by Huntley. And it's going to be third down and long for the Aggies. They'll call it 11 here. We approach 12 and a half left here in the first half. 7-0 Fresno State. Decent protection initially and then just not enough time for Atkins. A lot of guys on him. It's a lot of guys on him. We had five guys in a pattern, and no one was open. So Josh did the right thing, and he just ate the ball. So you see him here looking at his reads. He's looking right, looking left. There's no one there. Feeling pressure. Take care of the football. That's a good job. I'm a little concerned that we can't get away on the receivers getting in the open, and that we got to figure out a way to get those guys open. That was Michael Walker on the sack, making his 18th consecutive start. His father, Michael was a star for the Bulldogs in the mid-80s. Walker is a former defensive end who moved to linebacker in the spring. Big guy weighing in at 230 pounds. Leister will get a decent bounce as it rolls out of bounds near the 20. And that is where Fresno State will take over, trying to extend their lead of 7-0. Back to Aggie Memorial after a 61-yard punt. Aggies back home after a tough loss last weekend in Albuquerque. The Aggies playing their first of two straight here at home. They're going to host Liberty next weekend. Liberty is playing UNM in Lynchburg, Virginia this weekend. 11.40 left here in the second quarter. The Aggies 0-4, Bulldogs 1-2. Pretty big difference this year in opponents' points per game. The Aggies allowing over 50, but... You wouldn't know it if this was your first time watching the Aggie defense. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And the Aggies, I think they have four tackles for losses and one sack. So, you know, it's just, it's just, it's really strange how this has gone up and down and up and down. And so the defense is really doing well. Other than the first couple series, they've, they've really turned it up. 
Fifth year senior Jorge Arena back to work for Fresno State after another good punt for Theisler. Ball is at the 21 yard line. Two tight ends in right now for Fresno State, Rice and Sutton. Cropper on the jet sweep. This was a good play earlier. Cropper into Aggie territory, and he's going to go the distance. The freshman from LA, Jalen Cropper. And that's just the knife to the heart right there. You know, they, they little jet sweep, which they had some success with. They get the corner, they get around Richards, and from there, they get to the third level. DB trips up a little bit, and he's off to the races, and there's no catching him. 79-yard touchdown run for Cropper. They only use two running backs, Rivers and Hokett, but Cropper has been successful on the jet sweep twice in this ball game here tonight. So the freshman Cropper, who played wide receiver, running back, quarterback, and defensive back in high school, runs it in from 79 yards away. Two touchdown lead for the Dogs. Jeff Tedford and Fresno State score again. They go ahead 14-0, 11 and change left here in quarter number two. 19th all-time meeting between the Aggies and the Bulldogs. Fresno State 17-1, all-time against the Aggies, but the last meeting was an Aggie win. It was all the way back in 2011. Doug Martin was the offensive coordinator for the Aggie football team. And number two in Crimson, the Aggie quarterback, Matt Christian is now the running backs coach for the Aggies, and Danny, he had a big day on this day in 2011. Yeah, that was a big day right there. That was a nice win right there for us, for sure. And Matt did a great job. He was a, he was a fantastic quarterback. He was a kind of a dual threat, hard-nosed guy, and it's glad to have him on our staff as a running backs coach. It was a shootout that day as well. The quarterback for Fresno State was Derek Carr, of course, future NFL quarterback, and now Matt Christian doing a good job on the Aggie coaching staff. So that was the first ever and the only ever win for the Aggies against Fresno State. Fresno State has won 17 of the 18 all-time meetings. These two programs will meet next year. This is a home-and-home -home series. They're going to meet in Fresno next year. Kickoff to Jason Huntley, and he will get a return. And now he fumbles the football, but the Aggies jump on it. Christian Gibson recovered it. Huntley was belted. He was stuck, wasn't he? Well, uh, you know, he's looking for the one block that can just create the crease because you have to stay in your lanes. That's the thing about a kickoff. See how they come down? Everyone's in a lane, and then you converge at the last second. If he could get them just to stay in their lanes just for a little bit, he can break one wide open. In that case, though, he got popped. You're right. That was linebacker Aaron Mosby, who's had a couple of big hits in the game. Need a drive here, Adam. We need to get the ball rolling, get the points on the board. Navion Mitchell in motion. He had over 100 yards receiving in one half last week against UNM. Pretty big hole there for Gibson, but a flag is in. And Fresno State is saying it's going to be holding on the Aggies. This is kind of a makeshift offensive holding line for the Aggies. by number 71 of the offense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal, and it's still first down. The Aggies, Danny, have lost four offensive tackles due to injury. So that means Tony Bello has to play a right tackle. Isaiah Mersalot has to start. The left guard, center, and right guard are all redshirt freshmen. Penalty was on the center, Will High, redshirt freshman from Goodyear, Arizona. Atkins near his own end zone. The Aggies get a little bit of room. And it's going to bring up second down and long. Another carry for Christian Gibson. You know, trying to get away from that uh, end zone, it's tough because your play calls, you don't want to get too fancy because if something explodes and you get a turnover, that gives them, uh, they're right there ready to put points on the board. But you do need to get out of that end zone and try to get pick up the first down. Atkins throwing from his end zone, completes the pass, and then a big hit 
Isaiah Lottie made the catch. Chris Coleman, wow. the wide receiver did, at defensive back, made the hits. Did you see him come up and make a pop and wrap up? So great toss. Isaiah Lottie, great catch right there. Now Coleman, running back, he comes in there. I know, I know he played, you know, a little DB in high school, but that's a little while ago. But he gave him a little pop and wrapped up nicely there. Playing in the secondary because of injuries to Deshaun Ruffin and also Chris Gaston. Across the middle to O.J. Clark. Clark trying to reach forward to the 20. Still going to be short, and the Aggies will have to punt again. Clark at seven on the pass and catch. And Atkins is kind of clinching his right hand right now. I don't know if he was hit on the throw or what happened, but Atkins was squeezing his right hand following the throw. Player down for Fresno State is Michael Walker, the linebacker, but he gets up with some help. So I'm, I'm thinking, I, I'm showing that that's our, our fifth. Let me see if I got it right. Fifth three and out. It's, it's kind of hard to get some points on the board if you go three and out. So you got to really figure out how, what do we need to do to get some rhythm in there. Unfortunately, Danny, this kind of looks similar to two weeks ago when the Aggies fell to San Diego State 31 to 10, where they just couldn't get enough going on offensively and the defense at times played well but yeah they were but just on the field too much yeah and then you get one big play in it and it makes you pay you know we have a 79 one we give up one they've been playing good defense so now they're going to be called out to do it again Eisler has been busy flag comes in a false start by number three of the offense it's a five yard penalty and it's still fourth down Ball start is called on Devin Richardson, a linebacker who's on punt coverage. All that really does is move Theisler back a little bit, but now he's standing on his goal line. Need to be careful here. Theisler gets it away. Backing up is Ronnie Rivers, who calls for a fair catch. Wow. Another really good punt wow. for Theisler. He booted that ball. 54-yard punt. He's having a really good year. He's averaging almost 44 per punt, and he had a season-best 53 yards per punt last week against UNF. Well, you know, you try to flip the field on the punt, right? So you want to get him pinned as far back as possible, and, and I think those punts right there are really helping to flip the, flip the field. So, you know, they've got um, not great field position, but, you know, at least the defense has, uh, has some room to work with now. The drive so far for the Bulldogs. Touchdown, punt, 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 and then touchdown. Hokit with a running touchdown. Cropper with a running touchdown as well. They go jet sweep again, this time with Darion Grimm, a young man who started his college career at Nebraska a few years ago, senior from Stockton, California. I'm not sure what um, what's going on in some of those jet sweep areas, but they're certainly feeling like they could get the corner. In this case, if they get the corner, that they're blocking out on the linebackers and DBs and they're getting, picking up some big yardage right there. So we gotta figure out a way to stand our ground and, and turn those back inside and not let them get the corner on those. And yeah, this is not unexpected. They had a lot of jet sweeps against USC and Minnesota in weeks one and two. Pass incomplete for Edwards. Aggie defense good on a third down in this game. Fresno State one of four. Opponents were converting on 50% of the third down chances against the Aggie defense coming in. Third down, two yards to go. They need the 41. Reyna at quarterback. Running back is Hokett, passes complete to Edwards. Strong grab, Jason Simmons Jr. was right there, but Edwards was able to hold it in. You know, the quarterback getting the ball out, Jorge getting the ball out quickly there. We had arms up in the air trying to knock it down there. See it, one, two is a one step quick drop and get the ball out to the corner to pick up the first down. Good coverage, but he's able to thread that in there. Jorge Reyna, 8 of 13 passing for 53 yards. No touchdowns, no picks. Making his fourth FBS start. The toss on the sweep. 
Better job defensively this time by Richardson, Ferguson, and the Aggie defense defending Darion Grimm on the sweep, a gain of two. Again, they're trying to get that corner. In this case, they weren't able to get that corner. Richardson was there, and uh, we had a bunch of people standing their ground. The All-American wrestler, Josh Hokett at running back, play action pass. Reception made by Grimm. Tackle made by Lomax. Eight yard pickup right to the sticks. And that will move the chains for the first down for Fresno State. Darion Grimm began his college career at Nebraska. Then he went to Delta Juco. Third different school for Grimm, who came into this game leading the Bulldogs in receiving yards with almost 190. Two receivers set, deep back is Hokett. Carry for Hokett's ankle tackle there for Simmons Jr. out of the Aggies secondary. Little read play there, and, and we missed. I had a couple Aggies that could have made a tackle there, and we just uh, dove at the ankles and just couldn't wrap them up there, and he's able to jump around and put some positive yards in there. And at first down, when you can get five yards, it's starting to make the second and third kind of shorter and a little tougher for the Aggies. 6.20 left here in the first half. Hokett goes off. Ronnie Rivers comes back in, junior from Brentwood, California. Top rusher this year for Fresno State. Throw goes near side to Grimm again. Tackle missed by Lomax. And Grimm is shoved out of bounds by Matthew Young. So the tackle was missed, and Grimm gets a couple extra to pick up 11. Yeah, I get to see Matt out there getting some uh, time on the field, but this is a quick toss to the outside. You got your head down. You got to get your head up and then hold on. Grab something, jersey or something. I know Shamad Lomax is a good tackler, but we need him to make that play right there. Feels like we're just too far off, too much cushion on that uh, DB's. Aggies rush only four to the second level, Hokitz. That there by Austin Perkins. And Javon Ferguson, Aggie linebacker, who leads the Aggies in tackles this year. But first, a gain of seven for Hokitz. There's Hokett running off the field. He's an All-American wrestler at Fresno State. He finished fifth in the country at the 2019 NCAA Championships in the 197 weight class. He's playing football right now at 227. So he's added a ton of weight and good weight for Hokett. Rivers is swarmed down by three Aggies, including Ferguson and Perkins. Lomax was also up there. Just a little power football at him, right? So they get um, they got some momentum now, and they're they're really starting to push back on that defensive line. And so if they can get three or four or five yards of carry, they're just going to stay with that and just power through. The average right now for the Bulldogs is 9.8 per carry, but that's skewed because of the 79-yard touchdown run for Cropper. Rivers and Hokett haven't done much. Here's Rivers. Tackle made again by Javon Ferguson. So the Aggies have held those two guys in check, but it was a big play earlier for a touchdown run of 79 yards for the wide receiver Cropper. Just power football there. You see they get the initial block right on the line of scrimmage, and after they get that block, then you're already into the second level, so you have three or four yards right there, and if we don't stand our ground, they, they can just do that all day long, and as they're up, that's what I would do. I would just stick with it and not try anything sweet to, where you could end up throwing a pick or something. Two tight ends on the right side of the formation. Jared Rice and Cam Sutton. In motion, getting the handoff is Cropper again, reaching for the 10-yard line, but still short of the first down marker. He gets five yards, gonna be about three yards short. Big third down coming up for the Bulldogs. Big third down. Aggies trying to hold the Bulldogs to a field goal try on this possession. 
Jorge Reyna hasn't had to do much. 11 of 16 for 74 yards. Just kind of managing this football game right now for the Bulldogs. Tied in, tied to the right is Rice. They fake the stretch handoff, and the pass oh. is behind the receiver, the running back, Rivers. And it's behind the receiver because of the pressure by Javon Ferguson. Yeah, you know, we, I, in the keys of the game, we talked about QB hurries and trying to get some pressure. In that case, that was a perfect example right there where Ferguson came in there. You see it at the top of the screen and just screams by, puts the pressure on there, has to throw it quick to release. Nothing doing. Good stop. Twenty-eight yard field goal try for Caesar Silva, Jr. from California, who was 0 for 3 last week. It's out of the hold of Q Sick. And Silva is pure on this one. Now six for ten this year. And it's 17 nothing Fresno State. Does this have a feel, Danny? like you had two weeks ago when the Aggies played San Diego State. It, it, it does. It really does. And so, you know, that was a good series right there where they're able to stop him and hold him to a field goal. But the problem is, is that if you get behind the score, so now you're trying to have to get back on offense and make something big happen. So now it takes you out of your let's run it, let's set up the run or set up the, the pass based on run. It makes you start to do things like let's just take some shots, let's just do some things. And it makes it very hurried on the offensive side. But – they're not out of the game. It's not It's not 17 nothing. They're in it. They just need to put some points on the board. Only 78 total yards for the Aggie offense, offensively. 232 total yards for Fresno State offensively. The Aggies are 0 for 6 on a third down. And this one is behind Jason Huntley and through the end zone for a touchback. And it's first down and 10 for the Aggies at the 25-yard line. Well, Adam, you got 256. That's plenty of time to work with to put some points on the board. So you can you can run, you can do some things, you but it's imperative that you try to get down there and get points on the board to stay in the game. The Aggies are seeking their first win of the season. 0-4 start for the second straight year. The last year they won two straight after starting 0-4. Third straight game against a Mountain West opponent. Atkins goes far side of the field, breaking a tackle past the 40. Is Isaiah Lottie, his first catch here in the game. Like to see it. I don't care who it is from a receiving core out there, but someone's got to make a big play. Fresno State has been very solid on their on their tackling as they come up. In this case, Lottie gets the ball, turns it upfield to get some extra yards. They spin off, don't make the tackle, and he pushes it forward. Lottie picks up 20. Atkins looked left. He threw right. And he completes the pass to O.J. Clark near midfield. Fresno State's out playing this too deep defense where they're just sitting back there and not allowing any big play to happen. So they know, they saw what happened with you and him where, where Josh can put some big points on the board in a hurry. So they're sitting back there, giving them a little cushion, and that's the cushion they're giving them is that quick out which Josh is taking. Hand off to Huntley, who's had a really good day on the ground. Huntley's still on his feet. First down and more. Four carries, 50-plus yards for Jason Huntley. That's a great job right there. Just a quick give because they're sitting back playing deep on a pass and it just allows them to get up into the into the uh, second level, third level, and start getting some extra yards in there. Huntley came into the game averaging almost seven yards per carry. Atkins has time. Pass is caught by Tony Nicholson. Near the 20, Nicholson. The Baylor grad transfer with his second catch. The first was for 21. This one goes for 20. I like it. Coach runs the ball. Then he comes back out. Open backfield. No running backs. Everyone's in patterns. He hits Tony and gets some yardage. Atkins is swung down after pulling the football and deciding to keep it. And now the Aggies will use New Mexico the timeout State calls their second timeout of the half. 
30 here second in the first timeout. Half. In this game, we'll seconds. have a totally different field, Danny. If the Aggies can find a way to score seven here and make it a 10 point game before halftime. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think it puts some some confidence back in the offense. Please set the, the ball. game clock. We saw to the defense can do some good things. One, now, one, if one, offense can put some points on the board, they're in the game. Then then it's only you know a two a two score game. This is the one that Tony on a little crossing route. They're very two deep crossing routes and he hits Tony who has been very good and he gets extra yardage in there and they're sitting back just giving him that. And I think as long as they do, now that it's a little harder once you get down into this, into closer to the red zone, they won't be as far back. Um, but this, so this was a good timeout for coach, I think to kind of look at what do we want to do? Ring of Honor game for the Yagis tonight. They're going to honor their new Ring of Honor members at halftime. Danny Villanueva, Bob Gators, Preacher Pilot, Roy Jarella, Solano Joe Pisarchik, and also Duriel Harris. Had a great luncheon yesterday. Passes intercepted. Intercepted by Waylon Free, who is still on his feet. Huntley's trying to get him. Huntley shoved out of the way and free goes in the end zone for a pick six. Adam, this is one where Josh looked at the guy the whole way. So the safety sitting back there reading Josh, reading his eyes, and he's looking for a big play. So Josh wants a big play. He wants something across the middle there, and he's looking the whole time, stares him down. And as he's staring him down, that allows that safety to jump up in there, break on the ball, and just step right in front of the guy. Then you have all the guys that get past. Everyone's out in pattern, so all you have to do is get past the, the linemen, and you're left with running backs trying to run them down, which doesn't happen. Waylon Free with his first interception this year, sophomore from Compton, California. Point after from Silva is good. So you felt like if the Aggies found a way to score seven, things could change a little bit. But instead, Fresno State turns it into seven for themselves. And they go ahead 24-0. Keep in mind, too, the Bulldogs will get the football to start the second half. The Aggies won the toss and received the opening kickoff. That's a tough one right there. That's You're coming down, you're getting ready to put some points on the board. Instead, you're giving a pick six going the other way. That's, that's uh, two weekends in a row that happens. Um, this one really hurt because you have a long, sustained drive, and you just can't finish it. But I think if they go back and look at it, Josh really stared that receiver down. I mean, that was the only guy he was looking at. And as a secondary guy, if you just look at him, see right there, he's just staring at him the whole time. And that safety is just sitting there. As soon as he releases the ball, he breaks on it. And there's nothing you could do about it. Fresno State has now forced nine turnovers in four games. They have six fumble recoveries this year, which is tied for fifth in FBS. So they have forced a lot of turnovers. Now, the crazy stat for them is they have lost their last three games when they have won the turnover battle. They're 0-3 in their last three when they've won the turnover battle. So are, are you saying that this was good I, luck? I, <laughs> I, maybe, I, like, I, like I your, I like you're trying to find a silver lining. The up man takes it for the Aggies. This is Rashi Hodge. So now you have a one minute drill as a flag comes in late. Good field position before the flag. We'll see what the flag is all about on the field. I like Hodge picking up the ball. I'm, I'm all for that. If I'm out there and I'm a coach, a special team coach, I'm saying if that ball bounces to you, you be an athlete, pick that ball up and you go run with it. And that's what he did. 53 seconds, enough time to get something going. An illegal block in the back by number 11 of the kicking team. Correction, kicking team. It's a 10 yard penalty and a first down. An illegal block in the back, adding 10 yards to it. That's on Sherwin King Jr. Redshirt freshman from Fresno. There's a lot of Fresno natives, a lot of California Fresno guys. State Fresno State calls his first time out of the half. 30 second timeout. California natives this year for head coach Jeff Tedford. Well, Doug Martin said earlier this week, Danny, that he felt like Fresno State Correction, was the best be team the Aggies timeout. would play outside of Alabama. He thinks they're better than Washington State. And so far, although the Aggies have helped in some regard, Fresno State has looked pretty good. Yeah, there's not a, a piece of the game that they haven't done well in so far. You're absolutely right. 
Um, but this this still means that you're going to even even that they are you you're yes you're down 24, but you got to find a way to battle back and get back into this game. You know, being a quarterback is very difficult, and and Josh is is uh, maturing very fast. And we're going to see what he's like coming out. The hardest thing to do is get back on the field after throwing a pick six that you feel like the wind just got sucked out of you. And then you got to step back on the field with confidence to leave your troops all the way down the field again. So let's see what Josh can do. The Aggies committed 10 turnovers in their first three games this year. They only committed one last week against UNM. It was an Atkins pick six. And the Atkins interception tonight, the first turnover on the Aggies in this game. Outstanding field position in Fresno State territory. Aggies will go right back to the air. Gibson was open, but Atkins was hit as he threw by Katie Jacopo, transfer from Golden West College. He's from Santa Ana, California. Yeah, great job. Lots of pressure. A little swim move, swim technique up front there and just couldn't get the ball out fast enough. Ball is at the 47, second down and 10 for the Aggies. Under 50 seconds left in half one. Terrell Warner's in, he only has one catch this year, he was in motion. Underneath, catch is made by Navion Mitchell for only a couple of yards. Yeah, I think they're going to play back, play deep, and give them all that underneath stuff all day long. you got 42 seconds left, and now you got to really move the ball down the field. And so um, coach is in a, in a pickle here. you got to try to push the push the envelope and try to make something happen, or do you just try to get close enough to Illegal take a shot motion at field goal? By number seven of the offense. Mm. Yeah, well, that kind of. The penalty is well, declined. We yeah. just said Terrell Warner down. came in the game. He was in motion, and Warner gets called for illegal motion. Hasn't been used a ton this year. Young man from Holden, Louisiana. One catch for three yards for the campaign. Atkins launches. Great catch. Maybe on Mitchell. Not a big guy, Danny. He's only 5'10, but he I can like, really leap. I like, oh, he's limping there a little bit. That's that's too bad, but hopefully he'll shake that up. We're gonna get a little tempo. What about the confidence in Josh? Did you see three people back there and he was confident to get back in there, throw up his back foot a little bit even and just drilled it in there? 16 yard pickup for Mitchell. Atkins overthrows Gibson. He just has no time to throw, Danny. They're in his face too, too, too quick. And we have uh, receivers breaking open. There was someone deep doing a little out way at the top, but you just don't have the time to look around the whole field when someone's in your face and you just got to get rid of the ball. Only 15 seconds remaining. The Aggies do have one timeout left. Five out wide. Nicholson, Clark, and Lottie top side of the screen. Atkins with time this time, and he throws low. Intended for O.J. Clark. 11 seconds left. It just seems like right now the game's kind of moving fast for Josh, which is unusual. It, yeah, it, it, that pass, it kind of felt uncomfortable just a bit, didn't it? And, and Josh Huntley was open at the, at the bottom here, running a, the, a route out of the backfield, kind of a wheel route, but you're right. But everyone has been in his face all night, so I don't blame him a little bit. Pass to O.J. Clark, trying to make a man miss to get to the first down marker. Can't do so. And there's four seconds left. So do you take the points here, Danny, and just go for the field uh, goal? I think you absolutely do. You take the points. you got to have something positive to go, go into, the, into the locker room with. And so if you can get some points here, down 21, I mean, that's, that's New Mexico doable. Mexico State calls their final time out of the half. 30-second timeout. Four seconds left. Dylan Brown missed a 50-yarder earlier. As we said earlier, this is going to be the first of two straight matchup for the matchups for these two programs. The Aggies and the Bulldogs will meet again next year as part of the back end of this home-and-home -home series. 19th meeting here tonight. Brown sends it through. That's the end of the first half. 
Aggies find some points right before halftime. 24-3, Fresno State with the advantage. And they will get the football. They will get the football to start half number two. 153 yards of total offense for the Aggies, 232 for Fresno State. That was a 42-yarder officially for Dylan Brown. Coach Martin is with us. Adam Young, Danny Nee with you, Coach. Uh, your overall thoughts on that first half. Are they on? I don't hear anything. Coach, can you hear us down there? All right, we'll head to break. 24-3 halftime here in Las Cruces at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Our halftime activities after this. Fresno State trying to go to two and two. The Aggies trying to mount a big comeback here at home tonight. 24 to three is our score as we get ready for second half action. Adam Young along with Danny Nee. Bulldogs have won 22 games the previous two years after a 12 win campaign one year ago. Not a huge difference in total yards. Uh, the turnover was a big one. It turned into a pick six. Penalties pretty even here. Danny, where do you see the big difference right now? Well, like like I said, like you said, that the turnover is the big one here. And the thing that you can't see on the yards is a one big play of 79 yards. Those are the two of the big things that really drove that first half. But other than that, it's pretty close. Huntley's getting some yardage on running the ball. That's good stuff. They're going to really have to put some uh, good cohesive drives together this second half. The turnover, Danny, was a 14-point swing potentially because the Aggies were driving, and it turns into seven points for the Bulldogs. That's a huge swing. That is a huge swing, and so you have to regroup. So the, you ended on a good note, though, right? You get you get a field goal, so coach is able to talk about something positive. Unfortunately, we start defense, and so now defense has got to be ready to go. This is the first time in the game the Aggies have kicked off. Darion Grimm. And Patrick Elima June back deep for Fresno State to receive the Dylan Brown kickoff. And here it comes from Brown. Really no win to speak of, and this one is through the end zone. So first down and 10 for the 25 yard line for Jorge Arena. And the Bulldogs offense, and Reyna hasn't had to do much, Danny. He's kind of just managing the football game right now. Yeah, I think you're right. I think when they they uh, push the ball running, they've really owned the line of scrimmage for the first part of the first half. It, there wasn't a lot for him to do. He didn't have to make any huge plays. He just depended on his running backs that are playing very solid and that offensive line that's doing a very good job. On the ground, 158 for the Bulldogs, but 79 of those came from Cropper on the touchdown run on the jet sweep. Rivers only has seven carries for 21 yards. Rivers the running back here. Reyna launches far side of the field to Zane Pope, who's had a quiet game. He gets a half dozen on the first down pass and catch. Yeah, we're playing back a little bit, and they're just going to take that for now. They're just going to take one, two, drop step, get the ball out. Second catch for Pope, the 17th this year. And Pope there we loses go. the football. Here we go. The Aggies are saying they have it, and they do. The first fumble recovery the on the field the is a completed catch. Young a fumble, with the fumble recovered recovery. by the defense. What a great night for Matt Young. Quick toss to the outside. You see some come in there, pop the ball, put the head right smack on the ball, and you have guys diving for it. You see Fred Young in there trying to get that thing, and uh, Matt Young, I mean. And so Matt, great job for him. On the night of the Ring of Honor, his dad was out at halftime. Right now, because Matt is playing one heck of a game. Local product from Onyate High School. As Danny mentioned, his father Fred's in the Ring of Honor. Longtime NFL star Jason Huntley, who had a great first half on the ground, has a good first down run here for another first down. Hey, there's a start. I wasn't quite scripting that coming into the uh, second half here. Little give right up the middle, but look at the hole, huge hole. 
And Huntley is jumping outside. He's dancing. You're right. It is acting kind of a Larry Rose-ish running. 58 yards on five carries for Huntley, who came in averaging almost seven yards per rush. From the 19-yard line, Atkins completes the pass. Tony Nicholson diving towards the 10-yard line. Nicholson with his third catch for 50 yards now. Yeah, Josh is showing how he can get the ball out quick. One, two, get the ball out quickly, take what they give you. They're playing back a little bit, leaving Tony wide open, a little curl, quick pattern, and he hits them right away. Nine yards on the reception for Nicholson. Aggies down to the 11. Second down and one for Atkins. This is Christian Gibson. Gibson up the middle, and he trucks his way down to the one-yard line. S Fresno State comes with a blitz right up the middle, but Christian just jumps past that. You'll see it right up the middle here. Here he comes. He bounces through that arm tackle there, bounces through another one, and he's just a hard north-south runner. I just love the way he runs the ball. Jason Huntley can cruise into the end zone. His second rushing touchdown this year, his 23rd career touchdown. You know, we talk about turnovers for the Aggies and how it kills them. In this case, it's Fresno State who had the turnover to kill them. You see Huntley finishing off a drive, but they came out off that turnover and they mounted a fantastic drive. Huntley walks that one nice, easy, right into the end zone. Point after from Dylan Brown, it's good. Well, we said this could be a character half for the Aggies. This is almost a perfect start. Fumble recovery for Matt Young. The first fumble recovery in his career, also the first for the Aggies this year. And then Huntley, one yard away. We have ourselves a football game here at Aggie Memorial. Well, for the first time this year, we can say defense leads to offense for the Aggies. They trail now by 14, a two touchdown game. Fumble recovery for Matt Young leads to a one yard touchdown run for Jason Huntley. And overall, Danny, if you just look at the overall body of work in this football game, the defense has played well. The defense has played very well. It was Coach Spaziani right there that you're looking at. He's uh, had to put together this defense and knowing that uh, he he didn't, uh, things didn't go so well last week, but he let it go and he let it fly tonight and he's doing a heck of a job right now. Grimm and Elima June back deep on the kick from Dylan Brown. That goes through the end zone. It was a fumble by the wide receiver, Zane Pope, that led to good field position for the Yankees that led to the touchdown run for Huntley. Huntley's had a big day. Hasn't carried the ball much, but he has six carries for 60 yards and now a touchdown run. Well, it's back to the defense, and it's uh, what have you done for me lately? It starts all over again because we still need a couple of scores to get back in this thing. Bulldogs, by the way, have now committed eight turnovers in four games. They've had two plus in every game but this one, but still plenty of time left to coach Yvonne Ferguson there right nowhere. there to meet Ronnie Rivers. Man, he wrapped him up so quick, and yeah, that's you, Javon, all day long. That's a great job. There's Xander right there, but you can see Javon Ferguson, number seven, coming right in the middle of your screen. He sees him, and he just wraps him up, not gonna let him squeeze out. No more yards. The featured backs, Rivers and Hokett, haven't done much. Just one big play on the ground. That was on the sweep by Cropper. Rivers, eight carries, 21 yards. Inside give to Rivers, gets to the second level, still short of first down yardage. It's gonna bring up third down and three after a seven yard scamper for Ronnie Rivers. Fresno State only two for six on a third down. Aggies on offense, one of eight. Line to gain is the 35 yard line. Go, 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 go. 
Jorge Reyna. Slant route, bobbled, and then caught by Edwards. First down, Fresno State. Juggling effort there for Edwards. Yeah, and that's just a quick slant across the middle there. That's a, that's a great pattern because what happens is you end up pinning your defender behind you, and as long as the quarterback leads you in front, there's no way the defender can get to it other than drag you down. It's just a uh, quick toss and uh, first down. Team captain Jorge Reyna at quarterback, young man from the L.A. area, from Downey, California. Delayed give to Rivers. Still not much there, just two for Rivers on the first down run. Ronnie Rivers is the son of former Fresno State and NFL star running back Ron Rivers. Second most rushing yards in school history for the father, Ron Rivers. Ronnie Rivers to the right of Reyna. They fake the sweep to Edwards. Reyna escapes, throws low, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Darion Grimm. The pressure, lots of pressure. Another QB hurry where, where Jorge has to step in the step up in the pocket and make something happen. There's Matt Young coming from the outside, can't make it there. Andrew Zander almost gets his hands on it, but nothing, and just pressure to throw the ball quickly. Two touchdown game right now, 24 to 10, early on in the third. Aggies trying to make a game of it. Bulldogs need midfield, they need the 50. Aggies rush four. Here comes Wilcott, pass oh. is almost intercepted. Devin Richardson, the young man from Klein High School in Klein, Texas was right there. It's tough because he's screaming up, hoping to make a tackle if they complete the pass, keeping him from the first down. Again, it starts with the pressure up front. Coach Spaziani dials up some pressure and he has to get rid of it quickly and he couldn't set his feet to get a good pass off and put him in punting position. An outstanding start for the Yankees on defense here in the third quarter. Two guys deep right now for the Yankees, O.J. Clark and Tony Nicholson. Awaiting the punt from Cusick. It is a high kick. This is Nicholson who calls for the fair catch at the 15 yard line. Punt to 43 from Cusick. It doesn't feel like a 14 Media point game out. right now, Danny, but it I doesn't. think if the Aggies score here, it's going to feel like a one possession game. Aggies on offense. They just scored a touchdown, a one-yard run for Huntley. They have the ball back when you come back. Great day for football for fans of all ages here at Aggie Memorial Stadium, 24 to 10. Fresno State has to lead. The Aggies have the football with 10.32 left in the third. Want to get your degree and stay debt free? With the New Mexico Army National Guard, you can get paid to be a full-time student. Ask us how you get up to 100% tuition assistance. Join the Guard and be a part-time soldier and earn a college degree. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Aggie football, 15-yard line for Josh Atkins. Redshirt sophomore from Spring Branch, Texas. Smithson Valley High School. Threw a pick six and half one. He's only thrown for 112 in this game. Nearly intercepted. Isaiah Lottie got his hands on it, but so did Chris Coleman, the wow. wide receiver who is he's, seeing action in the backfield on defense. Yeah, he jumped that one quick. Here's the thing about jumping patterns quick, though, Adam. It leaves you open for a pump and go, and I think Coach is probably going to see that. Nothing there for Christian Gibson. Linebacker Michael Walker led the charge once again. Preseason all-conference pick in the Mountain West. Third down and long coming up. Empty backfield for Atkins. Atkins gets away from the defender, looking, throwing, and he throws behind O.J. Clark. Waylon Free was there in coverage. It was a quarterback hurry for Kevin Atkins. Yeah, that's tough. That's a jailbreak where you have uh, Josh just running around trying to make something happen here. Right on him, man. That's tough when you run backwards toward the end zone. He escapes there, 
and everyone's just trying to find an open space and they just ran out of time. Might have had O.J. Clark initially, but Atkins was under so much pressure, he was trying to run free, and this was not our target. So now Theisler has to punt out of his own end zone. He's had a great night. He's having a great year. Ronnie Rivers calls for a fair catch at the 40, and he hauls it in. Another good punt for Theisler. This one, 48 yards. Offense back to work for the Bulldogs for Jorge Reyna and crew after this. Fresno State with the football ahead by 14. 9.44 left here in quarter three at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Adam Young and Danny Nee with you. Time now for our New Mexico State student athletes of the game. Today we recognize Dylan Brown from Aggie football and Kelly Burden from Aggie women's soccer. Brown is a 3-H student majoring in kinesiology, while Burton has a 3-H EPA majoring in accounting. New Mexico State University, be bold, shape the future. Brown has a 42-yard field goal tonight. Aggie women's soccer was in South Dakota this weekend, just wrapped up play earlier today. Good field position for Jorge Reyna. And the Bulldogs. Some great quarterbacks over the years for Fresno State, including the Carr brothers, Derek and David. Reyna scampering, sliding. It's a couple yards. Boy, we had him pinned, didn't we? We, we missed a couple times there where uh, Jorge is able to just kind of spin out of it. Looks like he fakes the jet sweep, and we just don't break down, and he kind of gets out of there, but uh, sneaks, sneaks away from Javon Ferguson as well. But, but yeah, we're, we're right there, just inches from those tackles. Reyna gets three, second down and seven. The Aggies rush four. Reyna rolling right, and he throws it to Edwards, who holds in another pass. Four crimson jerseys right there for the tackle. Edwards has had a good day. That's his fifth catch to lead Fresno State. You know, when Jorge has enough time in there, he can set his feet and, and have a good pass. He throws it out there, and we sit in a zone, and they just find that little area to sit down in, and he completes it. 14-yard connection on second down. Throw on first down to Edwards, and he is belted by freshman Jason Simmons, Jr., but he hangs on for the grab. There is a flag down. And Simmons is down for the Aggies. A little crossing right across the middle there. You know, Simmons has been tough, and he's been holding his ground in that territory there. And he, it looks like his stomach gives him a pop, but he hangs on to the football. That was catch number six for Edwards. Completion number 16 for Reyna. A personal foul targeting by number 17 of the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. The play is under further review. So Simmons called for targeting and he is the man down. Now they're gonna review to see if Simmons will stay in the game. Either way, he's gonna head off to the sideline yeah. for the upcoming plays. Well, you're looking at Danny, did he lower the crown of the helmet? And they're Indeed. gonna review to see if the call is yeah. held up, and if so, the player is disqualified. Of course, targeting has become such a big part of this game, and. You know, maybe it was to the head, too, and so it's just uh, it's just one of those quick ones, too, there, right? So quick pass gets it across the middle there. We've seen Simmons hit really hard in this game, probably the hardest we've seen during his freshman year. He's been one of the bright spots in the Aggies secondary. Doug Martin, the head coach, has raved about his play. He's the son of Green Bay Packers defensive backs coach, Jason Simmons, who played 10 years in the NFL with the Steelers and the Texans. Our referee tonight is Cooper Castleberry. Regardless of the call, Edwards has made a couple of big catches during this possession. 
you know, these passes are, are just quick. There's not too much pressure. When he doesn't have too much pressure, he can set up, and he's pretty pretty accurate, Jorge I'm talking about. Um, there's, a, there's the call right there. Right now, Frank Spaziani is on the sideline motioning. That is not targeting. Simmons is back on the field, so it looks like he will be okay. He was obviously shaken up on the hit. Taking the officials a pretty long time, pretty long time. to check it out. Fresno State has really marched down the field here, and they and it's behind uh, um, some passing, some quick passing out on the on the edge. This will be a huge goal if targeting is upheld because Jason Simmons Jr., like we said, has been one of the best guys in the secondary. He's making some plays tonight. Right. And to stay in the game, the defense has to continue to play tough. They got to be uh, bullish. They got to go get them. And I know uh, Simmons is doing that. That's what you After have to do. After further review, hold there is no targeting. It's a first down at the 26-yard line. So a first down for Fresno State, of course, but the big call is no targeting on Simmons Jr., who's going to stay in the game. Well, we've seen those calls go both ways, right? That's true. So Simmons will stay in. Also in the secondary, Shaman Lomax, Chance Cook, and Jared Phipps. Phipps playing tonight over Ray Buford, not because of injury, just because of performance. And right now, Cook is playing over Austin Perkins at free safety. Cook's the transfer from Oklahoma State. Josh Hokett hasn't had many carries tonight. He gets one right here. That's just the sixth carry for Hokett, who had three total touchdowns last week against Sacramento State. Hokett gains three on the first down run. Now, this is quite the drive that they're putting together, and, and, um, and it's going to matter at some point in the game where you'll start eating the clock on these long drives. So certainly the defense, it would be great to have them dig their heels in right here. Hoka to the left of quarterback Jorge Reyna. Fifth year redshirt senior from Downey, California in the LA area. Right back to Hoka and the Aggies stuff the run again. That's a great job by the defensive line this time. They were holding their gaps. There were, you know, nothing there. They couldn't, couldn't find a seam or anything to duck his head into. So not many yards there and puts him in a, a third down situation. That was John Graves the third on the stuff. Redshirt freshman, Lancaster, Texas native. Playing some nose tackle. Roy Lopez out again for the fourth straight game. He will redshirt this year, but if Lopez gets healthy down the stretch, he can play in the final three because of the new redshirt rules. Empty backfield for Reyna. And a timeout New Mexico is called State calls their first timeout of the half. Before the third down play. The Aggies want to make sure they're lined up correctly, and they know what they're doing out here. This is a big play in this football game. Yeah, absolutely. And so I like the I like the timeout. If they're not set up correctly, and we saw a lot of Aggies motioning back and forth and pointing to guys, so let's you know it's like let's take a timeout and make sure this is correct, so we don't give up anything easy. All Aggies so far in this quarter. One yard touchdown run for Jason Huntley on Ring of Honor night. Some good players in that six-man crew, Danny. Yeah, those are some fantastic players. We see pictures of them all over the halls everywhere, and it's the ones when you come in and you read about these guys, and they're just phenomenal. You know, I had a chance to visit with Sarah Preacher uh, last night, and what a what a great person and uh, just a fantastic athlete and preacher uh, pilot. So uh, glad that she could come down and share it, but all of those players are fantastic, and it's great to have them in the ring of honor. Some of them were able to make it back this weekend. Pisarchik is here. Jarrell is here. So is Duriel Harris. The Aggies rush four. Throw goes far side overthrown, intended for Zane Pope. And the Bulldogs will have to bring out their field goal unit. That's a good stop, Adam. That really is. That's a fantastic, you know, the, the penalty that got waved off helped that a great deal. Uh, good coverage on that. Good pressure on the quarterback. 
He had to throw it over, try to drop it in because there was good coverage. Coverage. You can see him still jumping around a little bit because there is pressure on him. And Phipps had just great coverage. 38-yarder for Silva, who made a 28-yarder earlier. He was 0 for 3 on field goal tries last week. Silva barely sneaks it in inside the right upright. So the Bulldogs get points out of it, but the Aggies hold Fresno State to a field goal. So now it's 27 to 10. Still lots of time left with just under seven left here in the third quarter. Yeah, lots of time, and um, they got points, but they didn't get seven, so it's imperative that the Aggies answer back and try to get points back on the board. This has to be encouraging, though, Danny, the way the Aggies have come out here in the second half. Yeah, I, I think that uh, Coach kind of fired them up because they came out defensively in that first series. They were flying to the ball. Big pops, big hits, creating turnovers, and so uh, certainly this has got to be positive. And it's trying to put all of these quarters where you, where you get fired up and you play really good for one quarter, it's trying to play four of those is the consistency that coach is really trying to drive them to. But it's important now that you get here and get points on the board with every time you touch the ball. Seven plays, two minutes and 46 seconds. The drive for Fresno State. 38-yard field goal for Cesar Silva. Touchback, first down and 10 for the 25 for the Aggies. Josh Atkins, 16 of 27 for 121. The best player offensively for the Aggies, again, has been Jason Huntley, who has six carries for 60 yards. He had a touchdown run, also three catches for Huntley. Coming off a season and a career high, 114 yards rushing last week in Albuquerque. Gibson to the right of Atkins, Huntley to the left of Josh Atkins. Atkins with some time underneath, incomplete. Mitchell was hit by star linebacker Justin Rice as he tried to catch it. Looks like they were kind of looking at that little crossing play there. It was a check down, not a lot happening, so he see him coming across there and he just steps up in there and pops him quickly. Rice is the younger brother of Fresno State tight end Jared Rice. Four pass breakups now this year for Justin Rice. Huntley up the middle. Moves across the 30 up to the 31-yard line as he gets six. And it's going to bring up third down and a long three for the Aggies. The Aggies looking for their first win of the season. Fresno State looking for their second in a row, trying to go to two and two. Pass is deflected. Rice might have intercepted that one. Did he get it off the turf? It was awfully close. The ruling on the field is an interception. And it is an First interception down. for Justin Rice. His second interception this year. Also had one week one at USC. Just a little crossing underneath there and, and just get a big paw in there by Fresno State. Lineman there and it just pops it up and it was Ricky McCoy who batted it. The defensive tackle from Fresno, and then Rice able to scoop it up above the turf is the initial call. And it looks like that will stand. Interception, the second thrown by Atkins, his eighth this year. You know, the tough part to that, Adam, is that uh, it was it's in our territory. So it gives them a short field to work with again. And, uh, you know, Puts pressure back on the defense to get a stop there to try to keep him in the game. Deep back is Rivers. They fake it to Rivers on the end around. They go to Grimm. This worked earlier for Fresno State. Big pickup for Grimm on first down. The sweeps in the end arounds are really, really causing some trouble for the Yankees. 18-yard pickup. You think the coach kind of marked that on his uh, play sheet and said, we're going to come back to this as many times as possible. And the whole thing is to get the edge. And so here, you're going to fake a little play action, toss it back, and see if you can't get the edge. They get the edge. They get around Cedric. Rivers trying to find a hole. He dives ahead to the 11-yard line, picks up three yards.
the traditional stuff the Aggies have been able to sniff out all night. It's been the tricky stuff that has helped out the Fresno State running game. Only two out wide for Fresno State. Cam Sutton and Jared Rice, the two tight ends, top side of the screen. In motion is Cropper, had a touchdown run earlier. Not much here, he's taken down by Lomax in linebacker Ferguson. Defense doing their best to just hold on and just try to not get the end zone for a touchdown. And I know they're in good position, but it's certainly if you can hold them to three, that helps. Third down, three yards to go for Fresno State. They need the four. Chris Coleman is in at wide receiver. He's been used as a defensive back tonight. Now he's in an offense. Reyna throws over the middle, incomplete. He was looking for freshman Jamal Glaspy, six foot 178 from LA. Oh, and that's good coverage, and it's also more pressure on the quarterback. So Jorge's not just having to, to sit in there with no pressure at all. There's people all around him, and he has to force that and just gets off a little high. So this will be a 24-yard field goal for Silva. He has made from 28 and then 38 just moments ago. Trying to give Fresno State a 20-point lead. And it's good. So all in all, not bad for the Aggie defense. The offense put them in a tough spot, and the defense holds the Bulldogs to a field goal again. Yeah, that's tough, and that's one that um, certainly, I uh, know Josh wasn't, wasn't trying to, uh, you know, it just happens. And when you get a pop there and someone tips the ball, those are just what happens in football. Like last week where a receiver falls down, that's just what happens. Defense did a good job. You got 422 in the third. There's still enough time, but it's imperative that you start really getting down here and getting points on the board with each time you touch the ball and uh, really try to get the get this back in here where you can get it chip away a little bit at a time. Five plays, 25 yards on the scoring drive for Fresno State. In the end, Danny, it might not look pretty scoreboard-wise for the Yankee defense, but I don't think the score 30 points for Fresno State tells the whole story. I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. And I think uh, Coach has moved a lot of guys around, and he's doing a lot of things up, up there. And um, they've played a, a solid game. We just haven't been able to put things together offensively. Kickoff from Fuller. Over the head of Jason Huntley. Kind of an up and down day for Josh Atkins. No touchdown passes, two interceptions. One was a pick six. The other put the Aggie defense in a tough spot. Atkins has only completed 16 of 29. And a guy like Nicholson only has three catches. Jason Huntley only two yards receiving. Not the typical numbers we see for those two guys in particular. Right now, Fresno State plus one in turnover margin. They have lost three straight games when they've won the turnover margin. Nothing deep for Atkins, and now he chooses to run. Positive yardage for Josh right at the sticks. Looks like it's good enough for first down. A 10-yard pickup, and that will move the chains. And, and if you look, you can't quite see it, and it's on the right of the screen, but there was a kind of a uh, hitch and go, and that's the one we said, hey, they are might come back to this, but the defender didn't jump it so much that he was wide open, so Josh just had to take the ball, get the first anyway. O.J. Clark was in motion. Atkins across the middle. Kayla Mills with his first catch this year. Playing in his first game this year after missing the first four. Seven yard pickup on the catch and run for Mills. You know, Caleb is a, is a big tall guy and we need to get him into the game somehow and start creating some mismatches and, and because of his height, because he is 6'5", 212 that you can see there. Doug Martin has compared him in the past to former Aggie and current Baltimore Raven, Jaleel Scott. Christian Gibson lowers his shoulder. Tackle made by strong safety Juju Hughes is making his 23rd, check that 32nd consecutive start. Boy, Hughes came flying in there. To, it was a big, huge gap in there. And Christian just poured it into that gap, and uh, Hughes came screaming up. But was still was enough to uh, get that first down. 
First down run for Gibson. He heads off. And now Jason Huntley is the running back. Atkins across the middle. There's Caleb Mills again, his second catch during this drive. Nine-yard pickup for the big man from Gastonia, North Carolina. Comes across there and quick little hook, and at 6'5", what a big target. What a nice target to see for Josh. Inside give to Huntley, big hole straight ahead. Has to dodge the umpire who was in the way. Nice vision by Huntley. So you see everyone up in front taking kind of a, a zone blocking scheme to it. Huntley sees the hole and kind of dodges right into it. See it right there, he sees it to the left, he jumps in there, official gets in the way, whoop, but still able to go pick up big yardage first down. Nine yard run for Huntley, 75 on the ground for Jason. Adkins, downfield, oh. looking for Navion Mitchell, who had a one-handed catch last week. He almost reeled that one in with his left hand. You know, this is the time they got him out of zone. They're in a, in a man. Uh, they're going to put a little pressure on Josh, and Mitchell was cross, kind of running a skinny post through there. And he was there. It just got up a little mm. bit. That's a tough one. It's a tough, tough pass and almost had that one. That would have been nice. Second down and 10 from the 37. Aggies trying to make this a two possession game. They swing it out to Tony Nicholson. They're gonna lose two yards on the play. Third down and long coming up. You know, some of those quick tosses that we that uh, Coach is calling out there, we're, we're just one block away from that. Terrell Warner was out, should have had the last one, and we just get one more block, we're off to the races. Right now, the Yankees are not in field goal range. Atkins underneath. Nicholson. They're going to mark him, I think, just one yard short of the first down wow. yardage. That, mark, that was a tough mark, wasn't it? They're saying let's, it's a yard short. Let's see what happens right here. Tony gets the ball. He knows where he needs to get to for the first down, and he just dives forward right there. This is fourth down and one. And now we get the play blown dead. The ruling on the field was that the runner was short of the line to gain. The play is under further review. Yeah, they're going to check the spot. Okay. So the Aggies were going to get it, but... I think they're going to get it anyway. Doug Martin's <laughs> not happy. I think it's one of those ones that's like, let's look at it. Oh, we already had the first down. No, nah, don't go backwards. I think Coach is a little frustrated right there because we would have had the first down on that. So here's the play. Hard to tell from that angle. This is a big call right here. Now, if you don't have it, do you send the offense back out there and, and try to go for it on fourth and one? I, I think so. I think you're in a, in a point of the game where you're, you can't play it soft, you can't play it conservative, that you need that first down to put points on the board. You're down by 20. You need to start collecting some because you only have a minute left in the third, so it's, it's tough. Yeah, field goal here still three possession game. You get a touchdown, it's a two possession game, so. No question with just a minute left in the third quarter. Yeah, it sure looks like on the replay that it's plenty enough. And the Yankees have had a pretty good rhythm on this drive too, Danny, and this kind of halts that rhythm that you have. And I think that's why Coach was a little frustrated because you, you it takes it out of their rhythm where he's like, okay, we didn't get the first down, fine, let's get, in, get up there and let's go for it, and ran a quick little uh, a play and got the first down, and they said, no, we're gonna take a look at it, so it does break up your rhythm a bit. After further review, the runner made it to the 28 and a half yard line, but it's still short of the line to gain. It's fourth down. Wow, still short, half yard to go. 
Well, defensively, it allows them to regroup, and so that's why our coach is a little upset because, you know, they're not huffing and puffing from a big play once before and then to the line of scrimmage. Now they've had a time to get their breath. Let's see what we can come up with there. He comes with an open set. Wow. wow. Empty backfield. Half yard to go. The Aggies need the 28. It's at the 28 and a half. Atkins going straight ahead. Big boy football, Danny. I think so. I think that's what I was trying to look for is like, let's spread them out and see if you can't find a little area to go dive forward on it. And it is, it's big boy football and Josh is a big boy. Just followed his right guard, Austin Young, a redshirt freshman from Goodyear, Arizona. Looks like it's plenty enough for the first down, right? I thought so. I thought it was, uh, there was plenty of yardage in that. Yeah. Interesting, they're gonna take a look at it anyway. My yeah. goodness, yeah. an entire football in that know. So. I'm not sure why they did that. Man. All right, here you go. So coach got to take a breath. He got to look at his play call, his play sheet. 42 seconds in the quarter. See what he can go to. Clock moving as the chains moved. 30 seconds left here in the third quarter. Atkins back to throw. Caught, Tony Nicholson. Gets a block from Isaiah Lottie. Gets a block from O.J. Clark, and he gets a couple extra. The Yagi wide receiver is doing their job. I like to see it. I like to see that, uh, that as the receiver's getting a little crossing underneath there, Josh with time, but getting a little pressure, throws it underneath to a little crossing underneath, picks up one, picks up another, mm. and extra yardage. Player down for Fresno State, it is Chris Coleman. Wide receiver uh -oh. who's been used effectively in this game as a defensive back because of injuries to Deshaun Ruffin and Chris Gaston in previous weeks at cornerback. There's actually two men down. Cramping right there, it looks like, for linebacker Michael Walker. He's near the end zone, and then here's Coleman. So two guys down right now for the Bulldogs. Coleman gets up. Walker is still down. Nicholson has led the way for the Yankees again, receiving with five catches for 65 yards. So here's the play. We see it here. He, he sees it. He's got two helpers coming in there, picks up two blocks and extra yardage. That's a good job coming back and helping a, a fellow receiver. And to do it without blocking in the back, right? Mm -hmm. That's the tough one. Looks like a cramp, huh? The hobble. Josh, he's, uh, he's doing good. Confidence. Aggies at the 11. Adkins will tuck it and run. And he stumbles down to the seven yard line after picking up four yards on the first down carry. I, I just like the call. What a great call by Coach Martin because Huntley has been the man. He That's the end of the third the quarter. Linebackers have to honor that, and they jump the route or jump the, the run that Huntley was fake to. Josh keeps the ball. Great call. Aggies moving down to the seven. Second down in the first play of quarter four when we come back. Thirty to ten, Fresno State ahead by twenty as we start the fourth quarter tonight at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Aggies looking for their first win. Bulldogs trying to move to two and two and win their second in a row. Bulldogs will have a bye week next week. Aggies will host Liberty, then travel to Central Michigan and Georgia Southern. Liberty, by the way, defeated UNM in Lynchburg, Virginia tonight by the final score of seventeen to ten. Fresno State has Mountain West play coming up. Starting on the 12th against Air Force. Second down from the seven. 
Aggies will throw. Lob pass to the end zone intended for Isaiah Lottie. Jaron Bryant, the star corner in coverage. That's where he needed Caleb Mills, right? Yep. Still take a shot there, a little fade to the outside. They were ready for it. Third down. Atkins on play action. Tough throw, incomplete. Man, that had disaster written all over it, didn't it? Matt Young was in on offense. You know, I saw him come on, and I wasn't sure, but they snuck him in and tried to get him, sneak him to the back of the end zone. Little play action, and he rolls right. Matt in the back of the end zone. And maybe if he'd have got the ball up a little higher, Matt could have went up for the ball, but it was kind of a short throw, and Matt had to kind of play defense on that and knock it down. So now you're in a situation where you have to go for it here. Fourth down for the Aggies. Atkins to the end zone, incomplete. Turnover on downs. He was looking for Tony Nicholson. Quality coverage there for Juju Hughes and Michael Walker. That's tough right there where you can't, can't get any points when you're down there. And I know you have to you have to put seven on the board. You can't be content with three. Uh, but Media Coach doesn't look so out. happy with, uh, with the route there. But still, it was just... Uh, over the, over the head, nothing you can do about it. So the Aggies turn it over on downs, and it's going to be Fresno State football at the seven here in the fourth quarter at Aggie Memorial. The Aggies have outscored the Bulldogs seven to six in half number two, but the Aggies just missed a golden chance from the seven yard line. Could not punch it in. And now with 14.46 left in the fourth, it's Fresno State football from their own seven, ahead by 20. Adam Young along with Danny Nee, Anthony Casaus with us for Talent Stats, doing a great job tonight. Great to have you with us. Vinny Conway is our director. Rita Rodriguez is our producer. Thank you for joining us tonight. John Reyes on our crew as well as the engineer. Aggies back home next week. We'll be with you when the Aggies host Liberty for homecoming. It's been a better second half of the Aggies overall. Reyna, the give to Josh Hokett. Trying to barrel through Rashi Hodge Jr. That's a couple of big dudes going at it right there. Hokett's 227, Hodge is 235. You know, playing football against uh, former uh, wrestlers, those are the toughest guys because they're used to being physical. They're used to being up close. I'm still amazed that Hokett wrestled last year at 197, and yeah. now he's at 227 playing football. In the preseason, Hokett was supposed to be a linebacker, but because they were so thin at running back, they had to move him to running back, and he's having a good year. Had three touchdowns last week. Flag thrown. A false start by number 15 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still for second down. False start is called on the tight end, Cam Sutton. One of many tight ends that Jeff Tedford will use. He'll use Sutton and also Rice and Juan Rodriguez. Pushes the Bulldogs back five yards, their third penalty of the football game. The possessions offensively have not been good in this half for Fresno State overall. They've gone fumble, punt, field goal, field goal. This is Hokett again. I'm telling you, Danny, Hokett and Rivers just haven't found any holes outside of the They're, jet sweeps. There's been nothing. Yeah, right. Outside the jet sweeps, they've had a couple of passes that are underneath our zone. But other than that, not a lot going on. But because where they are in the game right now, that may not be such a big concern as much as the clock and using it and handing to him. That man right there is having a great game, Matt Young. It's 7.3 yards per carry for Fresno State, but that includes the 79-yard run by Cropper. Third down, seven. 
Bunched formation for the Bulldogs. Reyna from his own end zone. Fires to hook it. Ankle tackle by Hodge Jr. That was dangerous. That we, was almost a we safety. We almost had a safety on that, right? That was so, so close. Unbelievable. Only one yard pickup for Hokit on the catch. And it's fourth down for Fresno State. I think who was that that had him pinned there? Was that Cedric that had him almost right there? Yeah, that was Wilcox oh, again. He's having man. a breakout game tonight. He is. Cedric Wilcox, who had 16 and a half career sacks before tonight, had an early sack, and he's had a couple of quarterback hurries. Blake Cusick will punt from his own end zone to O.J. Clark and Tony Nicholson. The punt by Cusick from the goal line to midfield where Nicholson calls for a fair catch, and the Aggies are in. Bulldog territory to start the possession after the 37-yard boots for the senior from California, Blake Cusick. Bulldogs by 20 in the fourth. Adam Young along with Danny Nee. Fresno State coming off back-to-back double-digit win seasons. They are 22-6 in their previous 28 games. They won the Vegas Bowl last year. They won the Hawaii Bowl two years ago. This is a premier group of five program. And the Aggies have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in half two. Let's see if the Aggies can finish strong here in the fourth with just under 12 minutes left in good field position right here at the 48 of Fresno. Jason Huntley in motion, pass is batted oh. down. That was read all the way by linebacker Lavelle Bailey, a freshman from Sacramento. It's the right play call against that, but almost turned into disaster with a tip. When they're coming blitzing, you throw into the blitz because that's where the hole is right on the other side, but they just got a hand up and were able to tip it. Josh Atkins, 21 of 39 for 161. The Aggies swinging out again. This time it is complete to Jason Huntley. Huntley down the sideline, first down and more. He is so explosive in so many ways. And all it takes is one guy not to come in there and make a tackle. So again, just a quick toss of the outside. You're going to get a one block up front. That's the one that they need. He breaks it to the outside and picks up some extra yardage in there and some nice dancing. 17-yard pickup for Huntley on second down. He's been really good on the ground today. 9.4 per carry, also used in the passing game. Tony Nicholson, a former high school quarterback, air mails. His intended receiver, he was looking for O.J. Clark. Nicholson was a high school quarterback in Grand Prairie, Texas, and the Aggies trying some trickery on the first down play. Tony coming around here, we're trying to break a guy out the bottom of the screen, but he was well covered. I think Fresno State is pretty much sitting back and just making sure that everything happens underneath them and no one gets behind them. Decent looking throw though for Nicholson. Yeah, it was. Especially with a glove on his right hand. Gibson with some extra yards after the initial hit. Christian Gibson, a six foot one, 210 pound redshirt senior from Dallas. He picks up three yards on the carry. That's tough throwing in there to pick up those three yards for, for Christian. You're in there with all the big bubbas in there trying to grab it. Third down for the Aggies. Reception, impressive grab for O.J. Clark, but it's not enough for a first down. It's going to be fourth down and short. He needed seven. He only picks up a half dozen. It's a good, uh, good catch, just a little bit high. He had to really stretch his outstretched arms, and it just carried his momentum, just carried him right out of bounds. The Aggies need the 21 on fourth and one. Huntley bouncing to the outside, he gets it. Impressive run, showing off his speed. Needed one, he gets seven. Huntley's approaching 100 yards on the ground for the second straight game. 
He knows exactly where he needs to get to, and as soon as he gets to the outside, it's just like, get my shoulder square and go get that first down for sure. Ball is on the 15. Gibson's in motion to the near side. Rolling right is Atkins. Pass is caught by Mills, his third catch in this half alone. Playing in his first game this year, he only had two catches all of last year. It's good to get another receiver in the mix of things here. Robert Downs the third was banged up in the game last week against UNM. He has not played tonight. He was kind of a game time decision. So the Aggies are missing him, but they've gained Mills. Overthrown. He missed him, didn't he? He was there. He was open. Just kind of sailed on him there. Huntley running a little out pattern there. You have the wide receiver running deep, kind of pulling the, the defensive backs with him, leaving that underneath route and just a little bit too high. Third down and six from the 11. Four down territory for sure. Flag comes in before the snap. An illegal snap by number 65 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty and it's still third down. Those hurt. Penalty on Tony Bello, who's at right tackle this week. Third penalty for the Aggies. Jalen Guerrero's out. He rolled his ankle last week in the first series. This is kind of a makeshift O-line for the Aggies here early on in the year. Atkins oh, to the it. end zone, touchdown, Tony Nicholson. He saw that all day long. He found the crease in there. Josh with confidence to make that throw. Has to get it up over one defender and drop it in front of another one, and he does just that. Nice confidence by Josh right there. He looks right, freezes everyone, has a receiver that just breaks in the open, dumps it over one in front of another, nicely done. Tony Nicholson had his first two touchdown catches last week. Point after good for Dylan Brown. Nicholson now has six catches for 81 yards and a touchdown, playing well for the fifth straight week. 30-17, 13-point game in Las Cruces. Josh Atkins and the Aggies have outscored the Bulldogs 14 to 6, Danny, in this half. The Aggies pull within 13, giving themselves a chance here in the final 925. Well, it's not over. You're still in the game. You're, you're absolutely right. So they're right there. That's a nice, uh, nice play, nice score. Now it's up to the defense again. They've called on the defense several times tonight, but one more time they need them to get a quick three and out and not let the clock tick down any more than it needs to. The possessions in this half of the Fresno State offense. Fumble, which was recovered by Matthew Young. Punts, field goal, field goal, punts. He'll take that all day. The field goals by Silva from 38 yards and 24 yards in this half. In case you're just joining us, it was 24 to three Fresno State at halftime and the Aggies have mounted a comeback here to make this a two-score game after the 16-yard connection between Atkins and Tony Nicholson for the touchdown moments ago. Striking the Wonder Dog back for another year. Is there anything better, Danny, than a no, dog there's really not. a tee? There, there is not. <laughs> Pretty cool. Jorge Arena. No touchdown passes, but also no interception. 17 of 27 for 120. With a man who already has his bachelor's degree, currently getting his master's, completes the pass to Edwards. Lomax was there, so was Rashi Hodge Jr. You know, they've had some quick um, passes to the outside and some quick tosses to like this right here and the uh, Sprint sweeps. That's kind of their, been their offense, right? 
Yeah, some big plays, some big ex explosion plays for Fresno State, both on offense and on defense, has led to this current score. Pistol back is Hokit. Hokit on the carry, can't bounce it to the outside. Rashi Hodge Jr., who is Man. everywhere from his linebacker position he in had the Aggie that. backfield. That was a beautiful tackle right there because it it shows exactly what a linebacker should do. You're going to play off your block. You're not going to let the block into your body because when you do that, you're dead. You hold the block off. You, sh you shove them off. You step up there and wrap up both legs and no more yardage. That's a great play right there. Eight tackles now for Hodge. Team high 12 for Ferguson, who also came into this game leading the Aggies in tackles. Third down and long. Third down, 12 yards to go. Aggies rush six. Matthew Young with the pressure. Pass is complete on the sideline. Oh. Edwards holds in the catch. Edwards with his eighth reception. 17 yards. That's tough. You know, lots of pressure there. Again, balls up. You got to make a play on it. We're just back off a little bit, and we're just, just too far. You know, and we know exactly where they need to go for a first down, and we're still playing them a little soft. And that's what makes it hard. So you're back at Simmons on the, tries to get in there and strip it out, but he's able to haul it in. Eight receptions, 80 yards for Edwards. Reina is thrown for 137, so Edwards has been a big part of that. That was Jalen Cropper, wide receiver from Parlier, California. Got a lot of quick receivers out there trying to get that end, right? As soon as they get the end on that or turn the corner, they'll be off to the races. And so that play has worked quite well for them, and they're still picking up yardage with it. Fresno State just using the clock here. Under seven left in the fourth. Bulldogs do not have a touchdown since the second quarter. Reyna rolling left, throwing left. And he completes the pass to freshman Jamal Glaspie. Pass is complete. Number three. You want to find a way to finish strong if you're the Yankee defense. Yeah, you, you played you, well tonight. You, you do, and you and you want to be able to make a big play when it, it's time, and now's the time. And so he gets the pass off, and you're trying to knock it loose. There's Ray Buford trying to get in on it. But this is a time to take some chances to try to make a play, to try to get up in there and not sit back too far. Ray Buford Jr. is now in at the far side cornerback position. Jared Phipps has played the majority of the game at that spot. Reyna will slide towards the 40. We've seen the Aggies use some different guys in the secondary. We've seen Jared Phipps in there more often than usual. Chance Cook has played more than usual. One yard run for the quarterback, Reyna. Second down, nine yards to go. Jeff Tedford in his third year as the head coach at Fresno State. He has flipped this program. The year before he was there, they were 1-11. They won 10 games in 2017, then they won 12 games last year. Program record 12 wins last year. Reyna will run again, slides again. Javon Ferguson was hopping out of the way, trying to avoid the quarterback. You know, that's tough when you get a scrambling quarterback that's able to go and uh, still pick up that, you know, all the yardage that you can. But we had someone spying him. It was uh, Devin Richards who was spying him, and he just couldn't make the tackle when he started to pull the ball down and run. Bulldogs using a lot of clock. Rivers out wide, top side of your screen, defended by Buford. Aggies were trying to call a timeout. Matthew Young was signaling for it, and they'll Prior get it. Prior to the snap, New Mexico State called their second timeout of the half. 
30 second timeout. And Oliver Sukup does not like that call. Yeah, they did not want a timeout right there, but they get it. <laughs> and it's going to be third down and three. Well, here's the thing with Matt Young. He, he knows that they're out of position. They're completely out of position because there are two or three guys that are lined up on him, and it's just him by himself. And so it, it's, it's the, the numbers. He didn't have the numbers there. And so he did what he, the thing that, that he thought was right and to call a timeout to get, a, uh, to get in the right position. And, and certainly Coach isn't happy with that. I think we've, we've all been players, have all been in those positions where – where coaches aren't too happy, but you try to do the best you can. Heat of the moment decision, right? Heat of the moment, you, you make the decision, you do the best you can, and you stand by it. Line again, the 35 yard line for Fresno State. Cropper's in motion. They throw it to Cropper, incomplete. He needs to pick it up in case that was a backward pass. Yeah. Heavy pressure again from Rashi Hodge. Buford was there trying to pick it up in case it was a backward pass. The route on the field was backward pass. So now this is probably a punting situation here for Fresno State, Danny. No, I think They're going right. to say it was a backward pass, so the ball is pushed back to the 45-yard line. The call in the field is backward pass. Yeah, you can watch it, see it right there on the replay, and it's pretty close. I, I'm just a, a bit surprised that they that they ran. The it. ruling of a backward pass is under further review. So now they're going to review to see if it was a backward pass. I would have thought they would have just continued with the ground game, even tried some sweeps or something to try to keep the clock rolling. Instead, they come out and try to do a quick screen pass out to the right side, and it it's pretty close. I don't know. What do you think, Adam? Is it backwards? Pretty close? Coin toss? Coin toss, and the call in the field is backward pass, so, so you need enough to, yeah. to overturn it. That looks backward from right there. That time it looked backward. Cropper was kind of indecisive initially. Good thing for Fresno State that he right. did pick it up, and then Ray Buford continued to play on. So how about this? We were talking about the running game, Danny. The running backs for Fresno State. Rivers, 11 carries, 33 yards, 3 yards a rush. Hokett, 10 carries, 31 yards, 3.1 yards per carry. Those are good defensive numbers for the Yankees. Those are numbers you can be yep. proud of if you're Frank Spaziani. I, I agree with you, Adam. So then you so then you want to look at, well, what's behind the rest of the statistics? What's going on? And, and if you look down at the... If you look down at the... Score. If you look down at the scorebook, it's, it has a 79-yard long run, a pick six TD, and that kind of skews those those stats you just came up with. But you're right; that was those are good stats for defense. Referee tonight is Cooper Castleberry. 19th all-time meeting between the Aggies and the Bulldogs. Fresno State 17 and one. The Aggies won the most recent meeting back in 2011. After further review, it was a forward pass. It will be fourth down at the 38-yard line. Please set the clock to 426. So it's an incomplete pass. Still fourth down, three yards to go for Fresno State. Not really field goal range for Cesar Silva, who's long this year as 48. This would be a 55-yarder, so punter Blake Cusick comes in. Right now, Fresno State is trying to play field position anyway, ahead by 13. O.J. Clark is standing on his own 10-yard line, running rugby-style kick. And this is going to be a great one oh. if they can touch it. And they could not down it. They had guys in the position, right? So the whole objective is not let it break the plane, and they couldn't do it. Walker was there. So was Bryant. And the Yankees will get it out to the 20-yard line. So hard to play the bounce, too, Danny. It is. 
It never bounces true, never bounces, you know, exactly what you're thinking. Four and change left. Aggies back on offense. They can make this a one possession game. Now we saw the Aggies score in a hurry a lot last week. They could use a quick score right here. O.J. Clark yards after the catch. Quality pickup after what would have been a short game. That was nice, Adam. You know, he, he caught the ball. He saw that he couldn't get any more yardage going to the outside, so he stopped, pivot, turned to the inside, and picked up as many as possible. They got to hurry now. A little, got a bit, a little, little pressure. They got to go fast. Second down and four. Incomplete oh. and oh. intercepted. Second interception for Waylon Free. That was in O.J. Clark's hands, and it popped loose. See what happens, coming across the middle. I think Josh sees him, bit behind, but he put his hands on it. He's gotta pull that in. That one's tough, that one hurts. Third interception tonight for Josh Atkins. Three turnovers for the Aggies. That gives them 14 now in five weeks. And the defense is right back out there. Balls at the 29-yard line for Jorge Reyna and the Bulldogs. Ronnie Rivers, pickup of two. Fresno State will have a bye week and then start Mountain West play against Air Force in two weeks. The Aggies will host Liberty next week. I don't know what we can make of Liberty right now, Danny. They played UNM tonight. Pretty low scoring game after the Aggies were in a shootout right. last week with UNM. I think that makes for a good game next week, right? I would think so. Yeah. 17 to 10 was the final score earlier today as Liberty defeated UNM in Virginia. Play clock is down to five for Jorge Reyna. Rivers gets the call again into the third level where he's tackled by Oklahoma State transfer Chance Cook. Well, he put his head down there to get some extra yardage. It was uh, quite the contact there. Rivers picks up seven, third and two. The Aggies had allowed 240 plus rushing yards in each of the previous three. 219 on the ground for Fresno State in this one. The Wildcat for Hokitz. The All-American wrestler out of the Wildcat gets the first down for Fresno State. It's seven, only needed two. You know what you need. You're going to run the you're going to run the ball, keep the clock going. You know what you need for a first down. So why not put him back there and say, "Go get it." And yeah, that's basically saying we have an All-American wrestler trying to stop him. Yeah. Josh Hokett, a senior from Clovis, California, Clovis High School. And now Jorge Reina is back in. Clock still moving, under 140 left. Reyna was the backup last year, only attempted 12 passes. First year as the starter at the FBS level after transferring in from West LA College. Here's Hokett again. Number nine. Hokett. Reyna was on the field, but he was out wide. Hokett has attempted one pass by the, year, uh, by the way this year, in case you are wondering yeah. when he's in that Wildcat formation. Not so sure that's going to be a pass that they're looking for right no. now. It's more like I got a minute six, minute two, and ticking. We're just going to run the ball. But that's too bad. You know those three turnovers. We did so so good last week against UNM, Adam, where you had you know one turnover, um, but now we come in here and you have three. Uh, makes it tough. Yeah, the two plays the Aggies are going to think about the most: the 79-yard touchdown run by Cropper in the 79-yard interception return touchdown Nine. by Nine. Waylon Nine. Free. Those were Those two big plays in the first half. Yeah, I agree, I agree. But on the flip side, the Aggies 
have outscored Fresno State 14 to six in this half, and it looks like that's going to be a classy move by Jeff Tedford. Absolutely. Fresno State will not try to run it in, and time will expire. Final score, 30 to 17. Fresno State goes to two and two. NM State drops to 0 and 5. Second straight win for the Bulldogs, and the Aggies have now lost seven straight, dating back to last year. We'll wrap it up and talk all about it when we come back to Aggie Memorial Stadium after this. Adam Young along with Danny Knee after this one. A lot of positives in half two. It could have gotten ugly after the first half, Danny. It was 24 to three at halftime. A lot of character shown and uh, impressive defense, I think, in half two. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It would have been easy just to cave and say, okay, forget it. We're not gonna, we're not gonna come play the second half, but they didn't. And there was some positives out of there, absolutely. So we have some players stepping up and making some big things happen. It just didn't happen offensively. We just couldn't find the rhythm. Three or four plays kind of got us out of position and really it's the telltale of the score. And turnovers were an issue again for the Aggie offense. They've now committed 14 turnovers in the first five weeks of the season. It's not a whole lot of offense in the first half and we felt like the defense played better than what the score indicated in that first half. Here's a touchdown run by Josh Hokett, but he, along with Ronnie Rivers, they were slowed down during the course of the night, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. We really uh, had them come up. Uh, we didn't allow them to get too many yardage running, and, and we did quite well defensively to stop that in the second half, for sure. Maybe the best game the defensive line has played this year. Cedric Wilcox was really good. Matthew Young had some good bright spots as well. And Jason Huntley continues to be really good on the ground. He ran for 82 yards here tonight. A lot of heart. I really like the way he runs. He really gives it all every play, and he did a great job tonight again. It was 7-0 Fresno State through one quarter. Uh, Josh Atkins was sacked a bunch. A lot of hurries as well by the defense for Fresno State. Uh, this was a big play here. Jalen Cropper, freshman wide receiver, 79-yard touchdown run to make it 14-0 Fresno State. Yeah, those are the tough ones. Those are the ones where it just make you bleed and it hurts. A 28-yard field goal by Silva, and then later on a 79-yard interception return touchdown for free his first of two that's a 14 point swing right there yeah that's really part of the game right there is those two plays really made a difference dylan brown with a 42 yard field goal as time expired he missed from 50 earlier in the half and the aggies trail 24 to 3 at the halftime break and then in half number two the aggies right out of the gate force a fumble recovered by matthew young uh, this was a great start to the second half. It was, and you would think, okay, we're going to build on it, and there it is. Jason Huntley walks it in nicely. One-yard touchdown run by Huntley, giving him 23 career total touchdowns. Pass was deflected here, intercepted by Justin Rice, his second pick of the season, and that was the second of three Atkins interceptions. So we go to the fourth. The Aggies' offense trying to find a rhythm and another batted pass, this time by the defense and the defensive line for Fresno State. Atkins was intercepted later in the game, but this was a touchdown pass to Tony Nicholson that made it a two-score game. And here is the interception by Free, his second interception as O.J. Clark could not hang on. And the Aggies come back, fall short. But the Aggies outscore Fresno State 14 to six in the second half here tonight. So the Bulldogs don't get in the end zone. The Aggies hold them to two field goals. Yeah, they did a great job. The offense is clicking. They just couldn't find the rhythm. It just felt like it just wasn't there today in general. But you know, all the pieces are there. How do we get it all aligned for a full complete game? That's gonna be what we need to look at next week. Time now for the Whataburger play of the game. Not a whole lot of offense to choose from. You had the one yard touchdown run for Huntley, but you had this touchdown catch by Tony Nicholson, who continues to play very well and continues to be the main target for Josh Atkins. And Josh Atkins, he checks right, he sees Tony there, he dumps the ball over one defender in front of another defender. Nice pass, nice catch for a TD. Nicholson with his third touchdown catch this year after a pair last week in Albuquerque against UNM. Final stats for you, time of possession, 
not all that different. It felt like more for Fresno State, to be honest with you. The Bulldogs almost at 400 total yards of offense, and I think those rushing yards for Fresno State are very skewed, Danny, because of the 79-yard touchdown run by Cropper. Um, but the three turnovers, it's going to be hard to win when you turn it over that much. Yeah, I think Coach preaches about that day in and day out, and again, it shows itself when you have that many turnovers, it's hard to win ball games. So now the Aggies will wrap up this two-game homestand next Saturday. Liberty is in town. It's homecoming. This is an opponent the Aggies know very well. They played them twice last year, and they're going to play them twice again this year. Yeah, UNM played them very close, so this should be a great game next week, without a doubt. Liberty defeated UNM tonight by the final score of 17-10. to Flames will come in next week with a mark of 3-2, and and the Aggies have dropped to 0-5 on the season. So join us for our next telecast next Saturday when Aggie football plays host to Liberty in the annual homecoming game. Our coverage starts at 6 p.m. Tonight's broadcast was a co-production of students and staff at New Mexico State University. For the entire crew, my partner Danny Nee, Adam Young saying thank you for joining us. The comeback falls just short as the Aggies drop this one to the Bulldogs, 30-17 in the final. Good night from Las Cruces.